This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Whoa. Whoa. Just zip past, did you say? Yeah, whoa. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. But with me as always, and this time, is my co host, Nick Mason. Sorry, what? With me as always, and also this time. Oh! It's my co-host Nick Mason. Hello. I mean, you're not always here. with me. No, that's true. We not probably, even in your heart? No, definitely not. We're probably, even though I donated a heart to you? Doesn't count. Wow. That's more of a metaphor, and I don't. I still feel that doesn't apply. Huh. Yeah. Um, I can't I, believe I'm walking around here with no heart, and you're walking <laughs> around here with two hearts. You didn't even need I the found, second heart. I found out this week that um, if you get a heart transplant, and this yes. is very obvious, but it was confirmed to me. The that, soul of the person you got the heart from goes into your body. That's right. And then they do mur- you do murders if they were a murderer. Exactly. And on top of that, yes. whatever happens to the, whatever person they were beforehand, if you sin, they get that sin and their soul goes to hell. Oh, is this a religious thing? It is a religious thing. That's true. I saw that's that. got to be new though, right? New? Yes. No, I don't know. I just made it up. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what it's so they wouldn't bloody read about it. <laughs> but basically, the organ stays the same age; like it doesn't get younger. Obviously, <laughs> but James, that's what I love about heart transplants. <laughs> I tell you what, I get older, but they stay the same age. So if you get a fifty-year-old heart when you're twenty, yes, then you you could have like similar heart problems that are like a sixty-year-old could have when you're thirty. For oh, example, I see, yeah, right, which right. is obvious, okay. but it's like, oh, that's okay. That's good to know. Mm. With Nick Mason's sixty-year-old heart that I have in my body. Uh, sorry, twenty twenty. To 25 or a different age. Thank you. Yeah. Thank anyway, you. this week on the Weekly Planet podcast. Yes. I love the to podcast t- that we do and we're doing currently. That's right. I love to tell people Even as you listen to this, up. we might be doing another podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like wherever you are in the world, yep. we're probably recording another yep. thing for you to enjoy later. But our heart's with you. That's right. At all times. Yeah. Uh, Chop mine into little bits. Did you? I'm putting it in envelopes. Oh, my God. I'm sending it around. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> da- so we've got some... Casting news for Blade. Oh, yes. Uh, we've got some other top secret, top, top secret Marvel projects in the works. There's time codes if people want to jump below. Uh, Black Panther's going on hiatus. Maybe some Daredevil news. Maybe some Lethal Weapon news. Maybe. What do you mean s- maybe? Maybe. All right. Uh, maybe. S- what, what's the... Uh- <laughs> What's the what's the trigger there? Like, are you are you either going to do that news or not do do that news? And it depends. I just might not some, bring it up. I might okay. skip it, or it's not here at all. And I'm You'll just get emails, James. You personally will get emails. I don't get any emails. You get tweets. I don't get any tweets. You get so many tweets. No, nah, I don't even. People will be like, what happened? People will be like, what happened to that news in the subject that I've already forgotten? I'm not even on Twitter. So if you even look for me, I'm not even there. <laughs> so if there's a guy called Mr. Sunday Movies. Yeah, there is, is there? Or Mr. Sunday Content. Or oh, whatever you there? are, Whatever you are. This whatever way. I am? Yes. I don't think so, mate. I think you're thinking of someone else. Uh, there might be some Star Wars news. Okay. There might be some uh, Miles Morales news. Oh. And there might be what talk of Spider-Man No Way Home, a new trailer, oh. of which I might have two videos for up. And then we want to talk about a movie that came out called Last Night in Soho. But in addition to that, a lot of people might not have seen that movie. So we thought yes. Last Night in Soho got us thinking about genres. We got you thinking about genres. Because you, you last fired night- back with a topic. You were like, what do you think of this topic? And I'm like, acceptable. Mm, because Last Night in Soho is in itself of a genre. Yes. And we're like, let's talk about genres. Let's talk about genres mm. that are maybe, maybe, maybe dead. Maybe so much anymore. You don't see them so much anymore. Uh, should they bring them back? Should they let them die? Mm. Have they tried to bring them back? Should they let some current genres die? Wow. What, what, what's happening? We're talking genres. Yeah. Anyway, time codes, as mentioned, if you do want to jump around. Now, James, should we pause the podcast briefly and look up the definition of genre so we know what we're talking about? And the about. pronunciation, because it might be genre. It might be genre, yeah. Yeah, that's right. interesting. It might be gunray. <laughs> like after Newt Gunray. Newt Gunray. Yeah, yeah. Famous Star Wars genre. I, I was, oh, yeah, sure. I was going to say Asian stereotype. But, oh, uh, no, I'd forgotten. <laughs> Um, also, just quickly, this week at BigSandwich.co, which is like a private Patreon if people mm-hmm. don't know, there's so many bonus podcasts, there's so many early videos, there's so many movie commentaries, and this week, it's up there right now if you're listening to this, we did Spider-Man Homecoming. That's right. Uh, the very first MCU Spider-Man, Spider-Man movie. We've already done Civil War, which yes. is technically his first appearance, but you understand, don't you, Mason? I get technicalities. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I get it. I get all the Marvel stuff. Yeah, so that's the uh, links below. If you like I hair get talk, most things. Yeah, but that you get. Mm-hmm. Do you like if you like hair talk? If you like a wig talk? <laughs> if you like 
anti-capitalist talk. We get yep, into a little bit, bit of that. that. Sure, yeah. Yeah, if you think about quitting your job, yeah. uh, listen to uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming Yeah, but commentary. then obviously none of our advice is legally binding because mm. this is all parody. Mason, this is not parody, though. <laughs> All of this is happening in Minecraft. That's right. Before we get into it. Mm. Uh, this week, I made a guest appearance on the podcast, Mish and Zach's Leguizama Rama. Oh, my God! So, uh, comedians Mish Wittrup and yeah, yeah. Zachary Ruwain, who you might know as uh, working with Auntie Donna or, in fact, being in Auntie Donna, yeah, both. have a podcast where every week they look at one of the works of charismatic character actor John Leguizamo. One of the greats. And, uh, and, and talk about it at length. Gets a bit ridiculous. Yep. Uh, they give it a number of Leguistamos at the end. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this week they were nice enough to bring me on board to uh, watch Spawn and talk about the movie Spawn. You hate the movie Spawn. It sucks, man. Okay, so is that out as of right now? It's out as of right now, yeah. If I was to go to Twitter.com, a website yes. that I'm not on, yes. and was to give it a search, it would be on there. I think so. And then it would redirect me to like a podcast distribution channel probably podbean wow yeah okay cool that sounds good maybe i'll give that a listen good fun would that be all right if i give that a listen please yeah i will then Mm -hmm. first bit of news mason this is via the hollywood reporting they say delroy lindo has joined the cast of blade new blade oh now delroy lindo yeah we'll know from all kinds of stuff that's right recently uh the harder they fall the western film that is on netflix very That's much. a genre, I, isn't it? Netflix, yeah. yeah. I very much enjoyed uh, Netflix that. film is kind of a genre in a That's way. That's right. Yeah. I think it kind of got like a big boost in mainstream uh, audiences with, um, uh, what was that Vietnam movie called that he was the in? Five Bloods. Five Bloods, yeah. 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 He had a very, really big standout performance in that. So what? who do you think he might be in New Blade? Oh. I, I was thinking like New Whistler. Yes, I think he might be, yes. Yeah, he's, about, he's about that age and he's got about that, uh, he's got that gruffness and toughness to him. That's right. And that would be great. That moustacheness about him. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. And Chris Christopherson, uh, he can't be it anymore, can he? For legal reasons. You think so? He died in the movie. Which means legally, oh, he can't yeah, come no, that's back true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a different universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, he's died... one of those islands in the stream. I think he in died the sky. twice. I think he might have died in first blade. I think he dies in the first one, but then he blade. yeah he, he he dies in the first one, but then maybe he barely survives or something. Yeah, it's been a long time. We got to come back drinks to them. of blood. Wow. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's a great piece of casting. Yeah, and I'm well into it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Here's something that um you might be well into. Okay, Kevin Feige. Yeah, I'm into him. I'm, I've got a Kevin Feige poster on my wall. Yeah, I'm always reading Kevin Feige Beat magazine. Oh, yeah. Teen Hearts Rob Kevin Feige. That's exactly interesting. Yes. Yes. What t-shirts are you going to wear with that with his suit jacket this week? You know, <laughs> in, the, in the little the little fold out section. Oh my god! It'll, it'll be a Marvel t-shirt. The t-shirt will. Oh no, Marvel. it definitely will be. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a Marvel property. Yeah, but but which one? Which one? Which Marvel IP will be? He will he be wearing the latest one? Probably late. Probably the one he's promoting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, he's working with Scarlett Johansson on a top secret Marvel project. Whoa! Where she is not going to be in it, it seems, but acting as a producer. So whatever happened with Disney and her and all the suing and whatnot, that's all been settled <laughs> yes. out of court. She got a big payday mm-hmm. and they're doing a thing together. That's fun. James, I've opened up the fold out and it's a Black Widow T-shirt he's wearing. That makes it's, sense. It's a Black Widow T-shirt IP that he's wearing under his <laughs> suit jacket. Do you think it's a Black Widow movie? Ah, uh, what else would it be? Don't know. Some people are saying like A-Force. Okay, sure. I mean, it might be Black Widows. Yeah. Like, it could be the the, the team that she rescued from the Red Room. Yeah, Black that'd Widow. be cool. I wouldn't mind that. Bring, bring yeah. those characters in. Give them all, you know, give them... Because the thing about, the thing about an A-Force... Yeah. Uh, very exciting. Bring together all the uh, female members of the MCU, but... Yeah. Pretty expensive, you would imagine. Well, the yeah, I mean, I mean, but if you did like Haley Steinfeld's new, yeah, okay. I mean, how expensive is Evangelina Lilly at this point? I have no idea. And also, you can you can pay her in little money. Oh like yeah, little dollars now. Yeah. So and you can say you can buddy. Why don't you make that money grow? Why don't why don't, why don't you why don't you get the amount of money that we pay you? Why don't you increase it with your shrinky discs or whatever? And she's like, what? <laughs> what is this? It's <laughs> happening. I don't. Ninety percent of the movie I was in, I couldn't see it. It was just green. I don't know what you're talking about. I reckon it's probably. I reckon it's a Black Widows. Yeah. Uh, just because it's a, that's a wheelhouse. Well, that's a wheelhouse, but it's, it would also be kind of a fun. Maybe it's a movie or a TV show, mm. but it'd be a fun. You know, you can you can get a bunch of those characters, and they yep. all go on fun like Mission Impossible style secret missions. Yeah, yeah. 
there's wigs, there's costumes, there's doing the thing where you leap up and you, the legs go around the guy's neck and then they do the flip and it flips them over a couple of times. Over. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. now I'm pointing yeah. it out. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm pointing it out at happening in mm. my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. And that's also cheaper than a big laser sky beam, I would imagine. I don't know. Stunt performing? You got to hire a studio for the day? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, a laser would be more expensive, yeah. wouldn't it? Bearing in mind that laser was going to level Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Mm. Does it? No, not in the end. No. Then it wouldn't be that. Expensive. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You wouldn't have to pay for that part of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe you could have a bit at the start where like this could happen, and then they show like a Manhattan being leveled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then that would be expensive. That's very expensive, probably it's more expensive than a flip. Just show the footage of Terminator Two. Be like, <laughs> this could happen, like a Terminator Two. Yeah, yeah like okay. the guy at Shields. Like, look, we didn't have a, we didn't have a budget for any. Com- the, the terrorists are going to blow up Manhattan, yeah. but we didn't have money for the computer projection, so he's just a copy. of Terminator 2 <laughs> on VHS on one of those wheelie cars that you had at yeah. school that had the blocky TV uh, and the hang VHS. On. I have to fast forward to the bit. Yeah. Hang on. Just give me a minute. And he's watched that scene so many times so it's all worn out. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, I guess, worth mentioning, Hawkeye starts this week, the first sure two episodes, and we are, we're continuing our recaps. Yes. Must, much to the disdain of Raw Collings. He sure. edits them together. Uh-huh. Uh, the audio version will go up early at BigSandwich.co. But, yeah, I think it's episode one and two. Nice. Uh, we, we didn't get in on the early reviews, I'm guessing. <laughs> seems, seems Certainly seems that way, yes. I got I got an email that was like, do you want a Hawkeye merch box or whatever? Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, all right. And then they're, and they're like, we can't. And I emailed back and said, yep. And they said, we can't give you a uh, review screener. And I'm like, you can't give me one? Or, like, is nobody getting one? Huh. And they're like, nothing. <laughs> So I don't know what happened. That's fascinating. Yeah. I'm fascinated by your relationship with Marvel and, so am I. and various movies. Because some, like sometimes, do people... sometimes they're like, "Do you want to come to a gold class thing?" And sometimes like, "Is there a ticket for this?" And they're like, "Who are you?" Yeah, I'm like, "What do you mean?" Sometimes they're like, "Your band." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not look. It's a. It's. I mean, it's it's fun and unexpected often, yeah. but it's it's a very confusing relationship. And they seem to churn through staff, and then they jump to different companies. And I'm like, mm. did I meet you at another thing, and you're a different person or something? They're like, no, you've never met me before in your <laughs> life, and you're banned, <laughs> James. I was banned. And like, how how'd you know my name though? Yeah. <laughs> and they disappear in a puff of smoke. I was banned once. All right. Mm. Uh, anyway, starting this week, Hawkeye. We're gonna it, get where's the Hawkeye it. box? Did you get it? I haven't got it. That was like a month ago. I do you think? Do you think they deliver it by by a big novelty arrow? Yeah, they might. It's actually, just a big, just a big postal crate on the front of the arrow. Yeah, you might be right. That'd be great. Yeah, just shoot it into the side of my car. <laughs> Here you go. Thanks. I think. Yeah, nice. It's cheap. What do you think? What do you think will be in it? A Hawkeye sweater. A big Hawkeye hoodie, I mean, you know? Yeah, nice. Say okay. Hawkeye. There'll be a little dog figurine or a soft toy. Yep, okay, great. Um, there might be a dartboard. Do you think there'll be it's a... the suction darts because they can't give you actual you darts. Think there'll be a, but there'll also be a real bow and arrow, right? They won't. They, no, no, Mason, no, no. On this? Maybe. I reckon there'll be some sort of, there'll be, you, you, you'll get a bow. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what'll happen is we'll get a, we'll get a crate. We'll, we'll open up the post- postal box and there'll be a crate and on top of the crate there'll be a bow and one explosive arrow. <laughs> And we put the crate in the backyard. Yep. We've got to blow it open with the explosive arrow. Cool. And we get one. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And we'd miss, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I end up blowing out the back fence of the property. Yeah, well, that what time we got the WandaVision, like, giant chocolate heart. Yeah. We're like, okay, that was an odd thing. So maybe it's an odd thing. Anyways, Black Panther has gone into hiatus over the holidays, it seems, the holiday break. Mm. It seems as if uh, Letitia Wright had, had got an injury earlier this year. Yeah, it's worse I heard about than that. they thought. There's also I been heard about it on this podcast. It may be so. And also uh, there's talk that maybe it might be vaccine related because she is, um, well, they're kind of keeping it hush hush, but she seems very vaccine hesitant mm. and that might impede like going into a different country or flying you know, oh, certain airlines true, or whatever. Yeah. But mm. it seems to be at this point the shoulder thing. And on, So what, what's going to have to happen is Marvel are going to have to buy whatever country they're going to fly into. Yeah, exactly. And uh, It's cheaper than a space laser, I'd imagine. Yeah, probably. But then Vice President of Development over at Marvel, Nate Moore, said a different thing about Black Panther. Uh, this is a ba- I hate it and I'm getting it cancelled. <laughs> he said, I will say the chances that you see T'Challa in our, um, as in our universe, I'm not hedging my bets. I'll be quite honest. You will not see T'Challa in the MCU 616 universe. At no point did we consider recasting. The challenge of Black Panther... Does he know the 616 universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a different universe? Oh, yeah, they are too. Yeah. I just assumed that was the mainline one, but it's not, is it? No. Yeah, because he can still exist in the 616 universe. That's correct, yeah. yeah this guy, this guy, 
This guy. Head of development. I bet he got a lot of tweets. A vice president. It, it's bloody universe 199999 mm. or something. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember. Get to the tweets, people. Get to the tweets. Uh, he said, the challenge of Black Panther Wakanda Forever is telling a story without T'Challa. So mm. I presume, So he says the MCU 616. So I guess what that also could mean is that they just get a guy from a different universe. Because oh. I think it also, it is a shame yes. that we wouldn't see T'Challa again. Just again. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I know, like, obviously he, did, he was fantastic in the role and the passing away was terrible. And I think, yeah, for the next however many years, yeah, don't put him in. But maybe it would be... Nice to see it. Like at this point, like mm. you, you can recast people. I feel that's true. You know, but I mean that that would that is you'd have to walk very tenderly around that if you're going to bring in a, another yeah. Black Panther from another. There universe needs to be, be like, hey, and now everything's his universe was destroyed, but he's fine. So we're going to bring him 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 in, and yep. now everything's the same. Don't even think about. Don't it. Don't even think about it. Mm. And guess what? It's Terrence Howard. We're making good <laughs> on that time that we fired him. And replaced him with Don Cheadle. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's an interesting wording is all I'm saying. Okay, sure. Because we've already seen him in What If and whatever and that's true, all those yeah. kinds of things. Anyways, I've got a scoop here. From, I've got a couple here actually this week from Daniel Richtman. What was the what was the exact phrasing? Black Panther. Uh, you you will not see T'Challa in the MCU 616 universe. Okay. So we will see. We're going to see a Black Panther. That's but true, not yes. T'Challa apparently. Mm. Uh, I saw. I think it was on the Reddit. People were like Daniel Richmond is he? He's not a reliable scooper, but I would say he is. Okay, doesn't always get it right, but I think as far as scoopers go, mm-hmm. he actually he gets a lot of things more he scoop a, than poop. Yes, I would. I'd say definitely. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's fun. He gets the coveted Weekly Planet more scoop than more poop scoop award for now. <laughs> uh, more scoop than poop for now. For now. That's on the plaque, and then yep. like a little threatening face. Yeah, you'll be sorry. Oh, that's the that that is what the. The, the little statue is, the threatening man. <laughs> yes. And he's holding a picture of the person who won it, like yeah. a little framed headshot yeah, in yeah. one hand, and the other is holding a knife. He's like, yeah. just wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be waiting. I'll be watching and waiting. And it's also like the cradle of a phone. The two hands, it's a cradle oh, of a okay, phone. Oh, okay, okay. And then when you get the award, the phone rings and they you pick it up pick it up and who it's like, it? we're going to get you. Is it us? Do we have to? We yeah, we've got to record okay. something later. Right. Yeah. Oh, we don't do have to do it live. Every time he picks up the phone. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. That's good. Anyways, he says. Is Under there pain an, of death. I just quickly. We're going to get him. Is there another element to this, <laughs> this farce that you've invented? TBD. TBD. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I'm just saying, if you want to add another element. I do, but I haven't okay. thought of another one yet. You sprung this award on me <laughs> that we have to give out every time Does now. that phone line also call out? Can you call other numbers? Um... You can call. Or is it like a pager where you can only, you know, receive messages? Oh, you can only. Or you, threats in this case. Yeah, yeah. You can only, you can only page Kelly Rowland and Nelly. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. I'd say encouraging things. Um, anyway, Daredevil, something is in were the they works. In that, were they in that video clip? Probably. You know, the video clip where she gets a, yeah, 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 a, yeah, she gets a do, text yeah. on Excel or whatever? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I do remember. Let's say that they were in it. Okay, great. And if they weren't. I've got this ominous phone. Okay. When we get Kelly Rowland facts incorrect. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> uh, anyway, he says something Daredevil is in the works. Some sort of reboot. Okay. I'm um, not sure whether it's a movie or a series. Mm. Um, now, everybody has definitively ruled out yep. Charlie Cox being in the new Spider-Man movie, right? Uh, I, I think he's in it. I don't mm. think he's going to be Daredevil. But I, right. Oh, he might be, but I think he'll be, he'll be Matt Murdock. Right. Yeah. But, he, I mean, yeah, so obviously – there was a moment in the first teaser, I think, where where Peter Parker is being sat down and he's yeah. talking to lawyers and everybody was like, that lawyer's Charlie Cox, obviously. And in the second trailer they pulled back and it was, it was not, not him. him. And yeah. so they're like, no, that, that's CG. Yeah, that's, that's a different thing. We're putting thing. him in there. Yeah, no, I think he, I think he is in it. Okay. Um, but uh, but here's, here's a question for you, though. Do you want another Daredevil series or do you want a movie? Ooh, movie. Because for me, yeah, I want a movie. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think tell us like a really tight, self-contained Daredevil story. In like, which is a newish kind of invent, reinvention of the character. Mm-hmm. I think that would be great. Yes. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. I like what they did with Daredevil, but let's see, like, let's see how much Daredevil we can like pack into like two hours. You know what I mean? Heaps, probably. A lot, probably. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Anyway, that's my opinion. And here's another one's opinion. Another, no, it's not. Sorry, this is another news. Do you think? Oh, the phone's ringing. The Kelly Rowland phone. Oh yes, go on. I'm not going to pick it up. <laughs> okay. Do you think? That if they are to bring Charlie Cox into this as yeah. Daredevil, do you think they would reboot his universe? Like in the sense of like, 
where he lives and all that sort of stuff. Like, do you think they'll... I think the idea is that, the like, production. some of it is real and some of it isn't. Oh, and they're only really Some doing... of it is but a dream. Exactly. But, like, they'll take some, like, the core elements of, like, yeah, right. the kingpin and he's a lawyer and he knows this person and maybe he worked with, you know, Luke Cage or whatever. But okay. they won't do specifics. Right. Or down the line they will. Mm, okay. That, and then, you know, it gets to Daredevil at movie two and he's like, there was dragon bones under New York, everybody. Did you know <laughs> yeah, that? yeah. I know one well, of the Bash yeah. Brothers. Did you know that? Yeah, I know one of the Bash Brothers. Yeah. Uh, so that's fun. Um, but I think if that, if like they didn't, if people didn't like those characters, yes. they'd just recast. That's true. Like if they ever do Inhumans, I mean, yeah, we'll say. There's but, uh, so many, there's so many Marvel characters still to get to. Yeah, exactly. It's Why would of, they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, Melvin Gibson, America's own. Mm. Uh, he's going to be famously doing- American. Yes. Born in America. Spent a lot of time Stayed in, in America. America. Yeah, that's right. Uh, died in America. Mm-hmm. Call on it now. Okay. Uh, he's going to direct Lethal Weapon 5, apparently before Richard Donner passed because he directed the first four and the only four, mm. but not the televisual series. Right. Where, where they Which re- was plagued with a lot of... They recast rigs or whatever. Yeah, everybody got recast and quit and there yeah. was all sorts of troubles on that on that thing. It, keep, it keeps getting advertised to me whenever I switch on 9 Go. The, uh, How often are you switching on nine? To watch go? Lego Masters Mason oh, with my son. I see. Right, it's a good right, and right. fun show. Mm. I just found out today that they're doing a bricks Brickmas special. Oh, I see. Christmas Le- Bre- Lego. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Will Arnett does the American version. I see. He's the host. Anyway, apparently though, it's expected to go straight to HBO Max, which makes sense because I looked at the numbers of the Lethal Weapon movies, mm-hmm. and in particular, of like four, they're not like. Hugely successful. In particular, the fourth one probably barely broke even. Um, and right. I don't think people would go to the cinema to see a Lethal Weapon 4 movie, 5, if I'm honest. They might see 4 again if you re-released it. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I don't – I mean, when was Would the... you go to cinemas for Lethal Weapon 5? Boy, great question. With Outside of this show. I reckon, I reckon even within this show we probably wouldn't go to the cinemas to yeah, see right. it. Yeah, right. Again, it's Mel Gibson, mm-hmm. you know – Look and say what you will of Mel Gibson. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want me to right now? <laughs> yeah, okay, right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, he sucks, it seems. And he's never apologised. Not well. really, yeah. not properly. But he, I think he is a good director. Okay, Like, sure. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. I, a few years ago, at least, watched Apocalypto, which I'd never seen. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, I can see <laughs> why right. people like this. Sure. Axel Ridge with Andrew Garfield, mm-hmm. you know, very good also. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, I'd have to see the trailer, I think. Yeah. I think, I, you know, it... Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Riggs yep. and Murtor? Yep. Okay, all right, man. I, don't, I do like Danny Glover. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. I do you like Rene Russo? If Rene Russo if is Rene, involved, yeah. I do you like Joe Pesci? If Joe, can he do it? I don't know. What's he done lately? The Irishman. Oh yeah. And he's probably in the new Home Alone. They kill him. <laughs> kill him for good. Great. I watched original Home Alone the other day with my son. Mm-hmm. It's a good movie. Did he get a little twinkle in his eye? Like, I'm yeah. going to trap Dad with a bunch of traps? That's what he said. Wow. He said, I'm going to trap you with a bunch of traps. Mm. Very violent, which I liked. <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't know if I would watch a new Lethal Weapon. It okay. Would, I, it'd really have to, it'd really have to, the trailer would really have to give me like a vibe of this isn't just more of the same. Yeah. And the the, the steam was running out of well, Lethal a lot Weapon of those, by A four. lot of those movies are the same. Like yeah. I remember, I th- I've talked about this, but like maybe 10 plus years ago I watched them all in a row. And uh-huh. I'm like, this is the same movie like four times. Yes. Like that he always gets his, like uh, Danny Glover always gets his family kidnapped and yeah, uh-huh. whatever. It's like, yeah. it's like what's they going on? They got cheerier though. Yeah, because it was pretty dark early on because yeah. Mel Gibson's like, my wife died mm. and I'm a big racist at heart. It's weird they worked that into the character. But, you know. That's, yeah. That's- <laughs> Maybe he's sorry. No, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this is from uh, Pucks, uh, the website, Matthew Baloney. A oh, new General bit of Pucks. News. Yeah. He wrote a big piece on the state of Star Wars. And one of the things. Very General the, Pucks. Very agree. General Pucks thing to do. Thank you. This is from, uh, uh, and he said that Patty Jenkins, you know how she's, that her Star Wars movie has been delayed? Yes. It says Lucasfilm executive, and we speculated last week, we were like, she one of those directors that got fired from Star Wars? Mm. So the uh, Lucasfilm executives were unable to agree on a script for her planned Rogue Squadron film, oh. so she's moved on to other projects. On top of that, Ryan Johnson's trilogy has also been shelved. Uh-oh. And some of the top filmmakers in the world would like to direct a Star Wars film, but are often found how found held back by micromanagement and plot point by committee planning. 
I wonder if they've considered making something new. Like a new Star Wars movie. Yeah, like a new Star Wars movie. Yeah, maybe. I um. No, I mean in the sense of like if there are all these absolute top flight filmmakers who can get stuff made and done, yeah. but the only barrier is they go to Lucasfilm and go, I would like to make it like this, and they go, no. Yeah. Surely they could go to a, well, it's a not, different production, it's, it's, movie it's not, production I, house and be like, can I do let's, this let's do a fan, Let's do a science fantasy movie. But it's not only that because often these movies, like, they announce them, and uh-huh. they're like, "This is happening. This is director. Yes. This is the time we're going to release it." Remember, Patty Jenkins stood in front of an X wing, and she's like, "My dad was a fighter pilot. I'm going to make the best oh, fighter yeah, pilot right, of all yeah. time." It's like, how does it get to this point? That's a great question, isn't it? What I'm saying is, and everyone's calling for it. Kathy Kennedy has to go. People are saying mm, that's right. But did you hear this week? I don't really care, actually. Just to no. clarify, Her sometimes ki- we go too far into this character of <laughs> we're really mad about Kathleen Kennedy or whatever. That I think a lot of time. We would get new listeners yeah. who are either like, oh, I'm not going to listen to those guys, they suck, or like, I'm going to listen forever because these guys are awesome. These guys are awesome. Yeah, so either way, we're happy to have you. Yeah, well, uh, welcome, um, welcome to the look, show. But look, don't get me wrong. I think, I mean, if she's the one responsible for like this, and I guess she is because she's the head of, mm. this is a problem yeah. and has been a problem for a very long time now and what is happening, you know? What is the, I guess the question would be, where does the buck stop? Is there like a series of... I think there is like is a, there a there's a board of there is a board and I, there are a series of guidelines for what you can and cannot do in Star Wars. Right. Did you see this week? I think though, um, Dark Horse are doing some stuff with Star Wars again. No, yeah, so they're they're shuffling because they used they it was Marvel in the very early days. Yes, and then it went to Dark Horse for decades, and it went, came back to went, Marvel. Yeah. yeah, but I guess the same way that their video games, they're like giving them to other companies to do now. They're not, uh-huh. you know, they're not just giving them just That's AI. interesting. Is this the Which same continuity as the Marvel stuff? Like the, your Dr. Afras and your... Potentially. You know, well, I mean, I don't, I hope, I hope not. I hope it's like, it doesn't all need to be connected. Like, nope, that's because true. Because then you get bogged down in it and you can, things that you can and can't do. Anyway, our contract has been renewed until 2024. And I think the reason though this has happened, because even if you look at like these, these failings of like uh-huh. directors and that, with the exception of Solo, they've all made a billion dollars. Yes, that's true. And and look, there's also... So, a, so whatever system is behind this yes. is working, I guess, to yeah. some degree. Even if it is just like one eccentric person or a half a dozen eccentric people who are like, I know we do all this pre-production, but I don't like this anymore. Let's get rid of it. Yeah. W- whatever system that is, is making them a billion dollars yeah. every couple of years. So I guess they're fine with it. But it's also like, you know, they, they were able to lean on the original trilogy cast. That's true. And there was like diminishing returns in terms of billions of dollars. Like the first, The Force Awakens made substantially more than the next two. Yeah, yeah. But now, now they have to rely on IP that is not the core original cast anymore. And so what is that going to look like? But on top of that, they're pro- like even if you don't like her, we've had The Mandalorian. Yes. We've had like Obi-Wan's getting a show. We're getting – got that song. Boba Fett, Boba Fett does his little adventures. Mm. The Clone Wars, Ahsoka, like all of these things – are still happening. And mm. I know people could say, well, that's Dave Filoni. Well, that's John Favreau. And yeah, that is true, but she still green lights that stuff. That's true. Like they don't go, no, this is definitely happening, Kathy, and we're in charge now. Like <laughs> it's still, it comes down to her decision. Uh, I directed Zathura, so I think I know what I'm doing. I've done space. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I can see why they would because it's continuing to make money. The numbers on Disney Plus like flew with like the Mandalorian. You know All what right. I mean? Like it's, and there's so much... Star Wars coming up. So you can't be like, we well, can, I guess. Like <laughs> everything that she's done is terrible because it's just not true. That's true. You know? Mm. Um, anyway, what I actually think happened, I think they got spooked by The Last Jedi when they gave Ryan Johnson like a lot of creative control. Okay. And now they've just been like uh, like really reluctant to like give anybody control or they give it and they're like, actually, we disagree and we take it back and yeah, whatever. Right. Because clearly – the Rise of Skywalker is a reaction to I agree, The Last yeah. Jedi and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And Solo was reshot and you know what I mean? As I, was Rogue One. Maybe what will happen is when a director is given the keys to a Star Wars, mm. they will learn to just not make another movie until it's time to make the Star Wars. Oh, okay, yeah, do, yeah. Do you feel like it's a case of, well, she made Wonder Woman 1984 and nobody liked it? It might be. Yeah. It could, but, that, but even then, maybe not because they did that big announcement after – in front of my eye, I can't see. <laughs> they did that big announcement after Wonder Woman came out. That's true. And for me, like we didn't like Wonder Woman eighty four, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of people were like, 
cool. Like she's like, give her the movie. Like okay. let's let's see it. You know, because I like her other work, including First Wonder Woman. Mm. And if she's like, I want to make an awesome fighter pilot space movie. Fuck yeah, let's see that. That'd be great. Well, then the only other well, not my money. The, I don't care. the only other answer then is that she she invited all the execs over for a fancy dinner party. Oh, and 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 then she she you know she burnt she burnt the dinner. Oh, no, and she had to you know put McDonald's on a silver tray or whatever. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Patty, is that what you think? Happened? Yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She just Mister Beaned herself. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. You know. Anyway, twenty twenty four. There you go. Uh, then they'll, and as I've said like before, she like she she will move on. Mm-hmm. It, like it's going to happen, but it's just apparently not going to happen. And it might even be before now. Maybe she quits before then, or maybe something happens and she has to leave or whatever. But maybe she you know holds a dinner party for some fancy friends. Okay, and she ruins the dinner, and she has to serve a McDonald's on silver trays, and then she's like, I'm I'm ashamed. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit Lucasfilm. I think this. I think like and they're like Kathy Kennedy. No, no, no. I think executives would be like. A burger, that's quite unusual. Oh, yeah. This yeah, reminds yeah. me of when I was poor. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They might be like, McDonald's, synergy. You know? They love <laughs> they that might sort say of stuff. That. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm. But anyway, I think Lucasfilm are still doing good things. So, you know. Boom, 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 boom. It's another Daniel Richman Whee! exclusive. Uh, let's see if he's getting the, the big poop this week or whatever. Okay, let's find is. out. Yeah. Well, um, soon enough. Apparently they're developing some kind of Miles Morales situation. I see. He said uh, they're now – this is on his Patreon apparently, but it was reported outside of that. <laughs> it said um, they're deciding at the moment which universe it is because in the comics, mm-hmm. Miles Morales isn't in the mainline MCU 616 universe. I mean he is now. Yes. Uh, uh, no, yes. That's Yes. My joke was that I also merged the MCU and they I didn't understand universes. it. I know. Anyway, he's not in the mainline. He didn't start in the mainline universe. He started in uh, the ultimate universe. That is correct, yes. And then that universe collapsed in on itself or something. Yeah, it know. did. And then he skipped over to the main universe. So yeah. they could do- And then there was some various universal shaking up and yeah. all of a sudden it's like, well, now I'm in the regular universe and so is my yeah. family and, and every, all, everybody's memories have been flipped around and it seems everything's normal. Let's never mention it again. There's a bad Reed Richards also. Yes, He's that's true. He's got a true. long alien head. I don't like yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, though, you could just do him regular universe, I right? I think so too, And yeah. they're sort of setting it up anyway. They did that in the Spider-Man PS4 game. Yeah, exactly. Just like, hey, he's just a kid in the neighborhood. And, and even and... in Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse had regular Spider-Man and then another Spider-Verse true. came over. But I guess also the point of the Ultimate Universe was that that also had a Peter Parker as well that died. Yes, Etc. Anyway, Tom Holland said this week, um, on relate in relation to when he's being Spider Man, he said, "Maybe it's time for me to move on. Maybe what's <laughs> best for my, my for Spider Man is that they do a Miles Morales film. I have to take Peter Parker into account as well because he's an important part of my wife <laughs> life." So, so a little boy voice. Mm, a little boy wouldn't have a wife. <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> If I'm playing... I guess in the olden times maybe he would, though. Yeah, I guess he would. You They'd know. make him get married for yeah. land or something. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Or just two, like, 13-year-olds. Because <laughs> you got to you marry your dad at 25 exactly. or Exactly. So, you know. Got to make hay, et cetera, before mm. you get leprosy or something. That's right. If I'm playing Spider-Man after 30, I've done something wrong. That's it. I heard that this week, and that's yeah. an interesting take because He's 25. Spider-Man is... In his 30s in the comics. So yeah. there's more to Spider-Man than mm. he goes to school and then he goes to college. Yeah. You know, there's also he works for a newspaper. Works for a newspaper. Sometimes he runs a business. Mm. He's like, I'm business today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Call me Peter Business. <laughs> um, well, the other thing is I th- yeah, there's more to that quote, which I don't have. But he Wait, was- that's too obvious. Business Parker. <laughs> no, I prefer a, Peter Business. Is that actually. another S- Simpsons reference? Yes, it is. Okay, yes. good. But um, he also said, like, maybe he'll do another three and quit at 32 or whatever, okay. which I think is probably more likely. Yeah. I think – so what apparent – and I think – I can't remember where I've said this, but I said it recently. Do you think it's more likely he'll stay on this money train for a, yes. another no, th- another decade? Do you think he'll quit and do those Netflix Apple TV <laughs> movies or whatever where he's a, where he's a bloody – Something. A something, yeah. 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 Well, I think because his contract – He can do both. He can do both, exactly. Yeah. His contract is up. And I, I think see, this right. is him going – Oh, Give I'm gonna maybe I'll move on, yeah. or unless somebody offers me fifty million dollars a picture. Yeah, but you know maybe he will get sick of it. I mean, I would. No, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. 
I mean, I wouldn't get sick of the money. You'd get sick of the press junkets, I would imagine. Yeah, probably. You'd get sick of the press junkets and everybody asking you the same questions over and over again. Yeah, and it would be it would get to a point where it's not as exciting. It'd have to, right? Yeah. Yeah. I also think you would I mean they all quit eventually. Oh, no, that's they? true. Yeah. Not yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. That's true. I think you would also even get sick of the novelty press oh, yeah. like like your, your hot ones and your, yeah, yeah, your wired auto complete interviews and yeah. your snack wars and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think eventually you'd be like, Oh, what are we doing again? Okay, we're test running British snacks versus American snacks or whatever. Great. Okay, great. This is very you know, exciting. I can't really for me. eat these because I'm on a special diet yeah, for my I, next thing I've, or whatever. I've not had sugar in two years and if I have one piece of sugar <laughs> I will die. Uh, so yeah, good, good stuff. But I mean you still have to go on that train regardless, don't you? That's true. But I was looking up because uh, we were talking about it in a minute the Spider Man No Way Home trailer, but I like, Tobey Maguire hasn't done a movie since The Boss Baby where he narrated. He was the, the narrator, boss. yeah. And right. then before that, it was like I don't even know. Sea Biscuit. I there was might have been Great Gatsby. There was some things that he did, but he basically quit after Spider Man Three. Sea Biscuit was a remake of Sea Biscuit. They remade the horse. Yeah. Out of old horse parts. That's right, exactly. Yeah. They Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had the they they put it on a piece of fishing line and they ran it through all the sets. <laughs> <laughs> they had a big fan and they blew it through all the sets. Was there any original sea biscuit in that horse? Or was it's, it all original dead horses? It's Theseus's sea biscuit. <laughs> yeah. They replaced every single part. And oh they're my like, God. is that still the original sea biscuit? No. Sea so biscuit. It's just a monstrous bag of meat, is what it is. <laughs> I've never seen uh sea biscuit. I have not seen it either. Wow. Right. But I have seen The Great Gatsby. I haven't. It's, 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 that's good, isn't I it? I liked it, but yeah. I, I think most people hate it. Do they? I think so. Oh, wow. Well. I tried to read it once, and then I went, oh, well, there's a movie. And then I didn't watch the movie either. And here Great we are. Stuff. And then 10 years passed, and this is my life. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Let's do it. Big, uh, big drop for this week. I should also point out that, according to Box Office Pro, they are saying that this will hit a billion dollars. Which will be Office the f- Pro. That's right. Are they scoops or poops mostly? I don't know. Who knows what anything is. I can't keep track of all these fucking websites. Because, again, whenever I mention a site every now and then, people are like, that site sucks. I'm like, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, maybe that's the, you know, that's the. There's too many. I there's can't too keep. many. But... Some, some of them don't sound real, but they are. I yeah. don't know. I mean, probably what happened here is these guys were just nobodies, and they're like, all we have to do is sound more professional than boxofficeamateurs.com. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just call ourselves Box Office Pro, and then you have to sign up to Box Office Pro Pro, and that's like five bucks a month. Am- amateur is one of those words that I definitely cannot spell. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like it always where have does, to be something where does like the e in the autocorrect. Go? Yeah, yeah. I I rely on autocorrect for the word terrific. Yeah, I, really. How many how many f's and how many r's? Are that right? one I can definitely do. Okay, right. Two r's, one f. Mm, maybe. Yes. Not, not maybe, mate. Let All me right. check. Yeah, that one's good. Well, now I don't have to. Now I don't have to rely on autocorrect. I can just listen to this episode back and call May. Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, I need to know how to spell terrific. <laughs> what do you even say terrific about though? What do you say is terrific in plain text? Yeah, just this is definitely not terrific. You just get a post and a stick it to your head. It says terrific. <laughs> Um, what were we talking about? I've forgotten. Spider Man No Way Home. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, going to hit a billion. What do mm. you think? I'd say probably. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. if it's good. If it's mm. bad, then who knows? I mean, who, we're getting we're getting modern day Spider Man fans. Yeah. We're getting people who are like, no, this MCU has been as good as 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 as, as, as Sam Raimi Spider Man. I haven't seen a movie since Sam Raimi Spider Man 3, the best movie they've ever made, or whatever. They'll, they'll be back for this. I looked at a movie the other day, a new movie, and it didn't look as good as the movie that I like in yeah. my mind that, yeah, I, yeah. that I saw. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And Sherlock fans. So that's a billion dollars. Those three, those three fandoms. Are there Sherlock fans still out there? Being like, give me more of that Cumberbatch. I don't think so. Give me another fresh batch of that Cumberbatch, batch. they say. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You think so? Mm. No one wants that. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe they're all in hiding. Maybe they, they should be. We don't want to see you. Stay out of it. <laughs> Stay out of our business and our pop culture. Does that yeah. other one still go? The US one? I don't know. Yeah, anyway. I'll look it up momentarily. Anyway, also apparently this week Michael Keaton's filming some Vulture stuff. He was just like, I'm filming Vulture stuff. Okay. Well, it might be for this. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But also he's... Might be for Dr. Michael Morbius. Exactly. Mm. I think his name's Michael Dracula, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's true. Yeah. I'm excited for Michael Dracula. Are you? Dracul Dracula, please. <laughs> Dracula. Dr. Dracul Dracula. <laughs> yeah. You got to be careful of that Wait, guy. The kids are going to call it Dur Dur Dur. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> That's a trend. Yeah. God, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the TikTok dances about dur dur dur. 
Uh, could be a Vulture solo movie somehow. Could exactly. be a Sinister Six movie. Yeah, could be anything. Could be that, that Doctor Strange movie or whatever. They're doing that yes. multiverse sure. thing, okay, whatever, right, right. which they're yep. re- refilming six weeks of or whatever. Yep. Here's a question for you, though, Mason. I yes. love throwing questions your way. Were you surprised that we didn't see one Andrew Garfield or one the other guy? No. To Tobey Maguire, no. no. Why is that? Because this is the first trailer, right? No, we had a trailer already. This no, but is the second this, trailer. Is this the second trailer? Yeah. Was the first one not a teaser? No, it was a pretty full trailer. Oh! Well, maybe it was, I don't know. They call them, sometimes they're like, this is the teaser, and the next one's like, well, this yeah. is the trailer. This is the final trailer. I'm like, was there another trailer? <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like we're in a world where... This is the international trailer. I feel trailer. like three is the absolute minimum number of trailers we get for this sort of stuff these days. And I think... I think close to the date you get, like, more variations. Yeah. It's like... TV spot that says the number one in the world. And Sony's, I feel especially mad for this sort of stuff. Although I think Marvel tends to rein them in a little yes. bit, being like, Apparently don't show everything. For, God, for God's sake, don't just show them it's everything. It's been said that Sony, this is the speculation, that Sony want to show them and Marvel's like, do yeah. not do it. I think maybe trailer three or whatever the final trailer is. Some hint. Some hint, like like three sets of Spider-Man boots on the ground or yeah. something like that, and we don't pan up. Okay. You know, we pan up and they're just empty boots. Just empty boots? Yeah. That's right. With, like, severed legs in them. Could a hint potentially be that the lizard gets kicked in the head by nothing? Correct, yes. Very yeah, much you so. saw that in the trailer, I, did. I assume. That was not in the American trailer, though? It was in a Brazilian cut on okay. maybe only so Twitter. There's, so there's a scene where it's on a set of – it's on a construction site, I yeah. think, and Tom Holland Spider-Man is swinging towards the lizard – what is probably the Sandman? Yep. And Electro. Electro. New new Jamie Foxx Electro. Yep. New version. James Foxx, I think. James Foxx, thank you. Uh, and and they're all approaching Tom Holland Spider Man, and then the lizard, like his head, sort of is, is sort of thrown back in a manner as if he was hit by something, but there's nothing there. Yeah. Which leads a lot of people to be like, "There's a Spider Man there," and they've awkwardly cut him out. Yeah. And they were on deadline, so they're like, "Should we should we move the lizard's head back so yeah. it doesn't look like he's being kicked?" Nah. I think they just released those frames. Um, by accident. I see. I don't think they were supposed to release any of that. Interesting. Yeah, because it was only that one bit that mm. it was released for. Um, but there's not really any other hints towards them other than the villains from, like, the other universes. Yeah, right, right, right. And, look, I mean, at this point, they're 100% in it, right? Like, I can't <laughs> see it not happening. I just think it's definitely happening. Again, it would be funny if it oh wasn't. Oh my god! What if there's a? What if they're not in it at all? And we get a post credit sequence of like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, the actors, yeah, just in a diner or something. They get ten million dollars each, right? Yeah, and they're like, "Can you?" And they're like, "Can you believe these idiots, the viewing public, thought <laughs> we were in this movie when we're not?" Yes, I mean we are, but we're yeah, playing yeah. ourselves. That's right. Well, we're not playing anybody. This is real. This is real. This is real. And life. this is our this real. This is real food. That's right. And this is our real disdain for. <laughs> The movie going public. Yeah, I would love yeah, that. Yeah, we can eat real food because we don't have to we <laughs> yeah. have to train for this movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I, there's just Tom Holland out the front looking sad. Yeah. He can't go into a kebab shop. They're in a kebab shop. He's not allowed to go in a kebab shop. Mm. Yeah. So um Toby Maguire's having falafel. He is, yeah. What do you think of the new electro design? It's interesting, and we've talked I talked about it in one of the videos I've done. Matt edited one and Lawrence edited one, but it's um the, the the lizard is not redesigned. It's the no. same as Amazing Spider-Man, but Electro is. Yes. So is this an evolution of the previous Electro or is it a different universe Electro? They all seem to be from existing universes we've seen. Yeah, so right. I would say probably an evolution. Mm-hmm. But uh, And if he can fix the gap in his tooth, maybe he can fix the comb over that he has. Yes, maybe. He's got that big star sparkly Yeah, that was a good. that's a good fun. Yeah. That is a way better interpretation of sort of Electro's big... Yeah. Golden star shaped uh, mask in the comic books. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, I reckon it might be different universe. Well, I guess you're right because why would why would a different universe Electro have yeah. have Aya with An- uh, Andrew Garfield Spider Man? Yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah, maybe it's just a just an evolution. Um, also, it seems that these villains were pulled from the universes they were killed in oh, or about to be killed in because it's like right. no these were destined to die or whatever oh, i see right 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 so does that mean like a few of so these... that could could that mean uh there's another villain pulling the strings yeah i don't know i think i i think they're the villains like right, and, sure. but maybe goblins like the main one or whatever yeah, right, right, i don't know but well if there's three if there's three going up against the spider man in that construction yeah. yard scene mm. then maybe there is uh but there's also hang on yeah. So there's four villains? It's five. Five. Okay, great. It's serious five. Yeah, yeah. serious about it. Uh, do you think uh, – okay, here's, here's a question for you. Do you think Doc Ock 
Will has has turned his life around in some way. Do you think? I think maybe he's not he's not a villainous yeah, villain. I, I got think a he's few just, comments uh, about that. I feel he's yeah. he, because again he he was reformed. Not re- he wasn't reformed, but he had he had he turned back to the side of good by the end of Spider Man Two. Yeah, and as we've seen, as as has been commented on before. In the trailer, we see him with red dots on his octopus yeah. arms, which suggests he's evil again. Mm. But that would all perhaps mean that the the arms have taken him over, and that's yeah. that's where we see him when he's introduced. Mm. But then he he gains his uh, he gains his senses back, mm. perhaps, and then he works with the team because there is a, there is a scene in the trailer where he meets Peter and yeah. MJ and Ned. Ned. So maybe he's like he's going to be the new dad. Yeah, maybe he's new dad. He's new Tony Stark. Dad. Maybe Doctor Strange lets Peter down as new dad quite early on in the yeah, face. Yeah. And then Doctor Oct- Octopus becomes new new dad. Some people didn't like the joke. They were like. That was a serious joke. Oh, because his name's Otto like Octavius. Name. Mm. I mean, my qualm of that is like they did that joke already. They it's did true. that Doctor Strange joke already. And, and if they were going to reuse a joke, War. they should have done the rubber band wrap 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 around the money <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been like, did you? Has anybody seen a a, a roller roller twenties with and around a rubber band? Because I found the rubber band around my balls, <laughs> Peter. Wow. Yeah, that's rude. Yeah, yeah. What I think is interesting. Aside from the fact that he put a rubber band with twenty dollar bills around his balls, mm-hmm. is no, just the, the rubber band. Just the rubber band. <laughs> okay, they've lost the the money's gone. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, James. I don't like that. But um, <laughs> I don't like how he's done that. But um, he would have saved that up as a sweet burn if they are taking them out of their timelines when they're being killed. Because mm-hmm. inflation, you're talking about inflation. I'm the talking joke about. would have to be hundreds. Yes, that's a good point. But Otto Octavius or Bitcoin or Bitcoin. Did anybody drop? Some Bitcoin wrapped in a some rubber bit, band. Some Bitcoin wallets. Yes. But um, Doc Ock is the... Did anybody <laughs> drop a series of NFTs that are gorillas wearing different hats wrapped in a rubber band? Holding because a- they found the rubber band around my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Ock yes, is the on. same age that he was. That's true, yeah. ship, which, which is when he died. Yes. So are they all taken out when they were supposed to have died? And the ones that haven't died die later fighting Spider-Man and yeah. are pulled out at that point. Because, like, Sandman didn't die. That's true. He flew he sanded off. away. He sanded away. Mm. Anyway, I so I think that because that's probably what's going on there. See, that would lead me to believe there is another person pulling the strings because if they're both, if they've yeah. been pulled from both parallel universes and time. Universes. From, the, from time universes. Yeah. Then it would suggest that there's somebody being like, I want to get rid of these Spider-Mans. Yeah, yeah. These spider about the balls thing, sorry. Yep, but. that's... <laughs> It's just such a good joke. That's how you make a it's, meme. It's baby. resonating. Yeah. Oh um, God. Then there, there must be somebody being like, I'm going to get rid of these spiders, man. I'm going to yeah. get their greatest villains and take them out of time and get them or whatever. Exactly. Like it may be that these are the other spider men have been fighting crime for, for years and years mm. since then. And they're like, well, at least I don't have to deal with the Green Goblin anymore. Mm. Uh, but now he's back. Now I'm back. Mm. The Green Goblin says. Yes. I heard Maybe you. It is I heard what you said, and I'm back. <laughs> Maybe it is Morlin, the weird vampire guy. Oh, weird inclusion, though. Yeah, right? right. Yeah. No one's like, oh, good Morlin's here. That's <laughs> true. That's why he's so evil and mean. <laughs> he's had a lifetime. He's had hundreds of lifetimes of people going, oh god, great. Morlin's here. Great. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had a you just psychic vampire powers, are you? Yeah, How great. original. Great. Yeah. That's good stuff. You look a lot like um, Dracula Morbius, whatever his name. Yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, a lot of other good stuff in the trailer. Yeah, uh, I think maybe you pointed this out. Uh, Doctor Octopus appears to be the Stark tech. S- yeah, he seems seems mm. to be siphoning off the nanotech from Spider Man's suit and yeah. incorporating it into his arms, which maybe is what turns him around. Yeah, because it looks like a scene where he's just going to crush Spider Man's head. Yeah, so why would he stop? Yeah, maybe he gets you know bloody. Maybe Tobey Maguire beats him up. Maybe Tobey Maguire beats him up. Yeah, or maybe he gets the the Karen operating system in his arms. Oh yeah, and it fights off. He yeah. asked to speak to his manager, the arms <laughs> manager. <laughs> it fights off the 2004 tech that it's got in exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. What's it going to have in there? Clippy. Napster? Clippy. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Clippy's back apparently. Yeah, I heard. I think you mentioned even on the show. Yeah. On what? Microsoft Word. Nobody mm. uses that. Great question. Everyone's using Google Docs, mm. I think. Yes. I know I do. Mm. Not sponsored. <laughs> What else, Mason? Ah, uh, in that trailer. Yeah. Gosh. The black suit is the inside-out suit. 
as uh, people have multiple people pointed out. What does out. that mean? It's the suit inside out. The the iron spider wise, suit. No, no, the the red and black one. Oh, so it's less. It, it isn't a suit made entirely of magic. It's yeah. just a regular suit. It's got it's like it's imbued with some magic. It gives it some magic. Right. Some magic web. Or shooters. is it is it inside out, or is it merely the inner layer of a different suit? Maybe it's, I don't know, one yeah. of those two things. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but you can actually, I don't know whether that's true, but when you look close, it's got like wires on it. Yeah, right. So okay. I think that's fun. That is fun. Yeah. Exposed wires are fun. Are they? Yeah. Oh, don't touch them though. Don't touch them. <laughs> Unless you're in for some fun. Yeah, then they are absolutely okay. If you're down for fun, yeah. touch some exposed wires for fun. Do you know what next week as well is? What's that? Well, obviously, Venom? Yeah, Venom. We're going to go see Venom. And it's also coming to streaming, which is great because then I don't have to go and see Venom. Mm-hmm. Um, is that uh, we're also going to do Snake Eyes next week. That's true. We promised we were going to do it this week. But we ran out of time. We're definitely going to do it next week. We ran out of time week. and interest to yes. do Venom. <laughs> Snake Eyes. Uh, yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> uh, snakes of Venom. Snakes have Venom. I don't know if you were aware of that. I think they're poisonous. I think you're fine. Oh, no, it is, it is Venom. Yeah, that is correct. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what else about this trailer, Mason, before we move it along? I think that's about it. Yeah, cool. Uh, we're around 50 minutes, so we're happy to uh, – again, there's two videos on my channel. Yeah. People do want to check them out. Mm. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like taking a call on a train or a bus, but you're on speaker and everyone can hear it. And it stinks. And everybody knows you're an idiot. Yeah, they go, stupid idiot, listen, man. Listen to this stupid idiot. God. Talking about um, pornos. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be so. You wouldn't be so uh, uh, lackadaisical with sec- your security on a, on a bus talking about your pornos on the phone. <laughs> exactly. Yes. It's like like they say here in this uh, in this ad copy, Mason. Mm-hmm. Do you want the whole train to know? And it says name something you wouldn't want people to know about. But I've already named it. The pornos. The pornos, right? <laughs> Uh, so I guess the question is, why does everybody need a VPN? And for me, it's about internet safety and privacy mm-hmm. and security. Yes. Uh, but another big part of it for me is watching shows uh, and, and movies in other regions that yes, aren't available Sometimes here. someone on the internet's like, oh, you've got to watch this show. It's incredible. And it's, yeah. it's finally made it to Netflix. And you go and you check Netflix and it's not on there. Yeah. Because what they meant is Netflix in another country. That's right. So of, uh, in you know, Iceland or I'm something. I'm like, I don't, I'm not in Iceland. I'm not in Iceland. What's the solution? What's the solution? And that's where ExpressVPN comes in, Mason. Mm-hmm. Internet service providers, uh, they know every single website you visit. And ISPs can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who use your data to target you. <sighs> and that's where ExpressVPN comes in. ExpressVPN reroutes your network data through a secure encrypted tunnel so your ISP can't see or sell your online activity. So simple to use. Fire up the app and click one button. Rated the number one Whoa. by CNET and Tech Radar. It works on phones, laptops, even routers. So Ooh. everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. You're watching one of those movies where they're like, we've nearly got the hacker. That's he's right. in this room and then they go to the room and he's not in the room and it's like they've rerouted it through Japan or whatever. Through Japan or whatever? Yeah. Oh, no. They're not very tech savvy, but he's more tech savvy, this it, guy. Exactly. Often uh, there's a number of things on YouTube that I like to peruse that aren't available. There's a lot of like sketch comedy in the US. Right, you know, yeah. when like once a year there's a good SNL sketch. And, and you get like, there like, you can watch it on it. YouTube on, on the NBC. Yeah. Uh, YouTube and you click and it's not there. Exactly. Use ExpressVPN. And I even like, I even do that on my phone. You know what I mean? I just fire it up and I go, I push this button and it goes, thank you for nice. using ExpressVPN. It doesn't say that. <laughs> but you just press the button and then I'll You think they could add that add, added functionality? It I think thank so, you. yeah. Probably says thank you when you sign up. Exactly. And it's also important to me, obviously, because I have uh, my a lot of my information on the internet and I'd like to not have more of it on the internet. Correct, yes. And get this, Mason. I'm getting it. Protect your online privacy by visiting expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash weeklyplanet and you can get an extra three months free. Oh, yes. And that's not a question mark. That's no, an that's what I'm saying. Point. I'm saying yes, it's true. <laughs> Still sounds like a question. No, it's it's real. Right? That's expressvpn.com slash weekly planet. Nice. Yes. Yes. Not a question. All right. All right. And uh, let's talk about, why don't we talk about it right now? The okay. Last Night in Soho movie. Mm. Um, we're going to do. It's called Last Night in Soho. Movie. It's the Last Night in Soho movie. Correct. Uh, there are, we're going to do no spoilers. Yes, that's because correct. Because. This uh, it was made for forty six million dollars. Beautiful looking movie. By uh, the spoiler way. alert! Thank you, but it only made seventeen, which makes me think that most people haven't seen it. Yes, as mm-hmm. of yet. Um, what do you think the story was? Oh, okay, okay. 
So it's. I would also say yes. if you don't know what this is, which I didn't really. Same also. Just skip and go to the next. Yeah. Uh, dead genre things that we're talking about yeah, yeah. next. Also, uh, little... and if you like Edgar Wright and you want to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say. Uh, also, every once in a while, uh, we'll get a we'll get a we we'll get a tweet. Or, a, or an email uh, about spoilers mm. uh, and the time codes they're in in this podcast. Yeah. If you are if you are listening to this podcast and there are ads in it, yep. like there there is the our podcast provider has put ads yep. in it, like every not on YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, but on through on the, Acast, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe add an extra couple of minutes, yeah, because they they add an extra couple of minutes to the runtime, yep. which can throw out exactly. The, uh, so if it says spoilers end here, yep. add maybe two minutes, yep, then spoilers will actually end. That's right. Uh, so anyway, uh, last night in Soho. So oh, bigsandwich.co was ad free. Also. Oh, there's also ad free. There we go on, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a young woman named Ellie. Yep. And she is from Cornwall. Yep. She's played by Tomasin uh, McKenzie. Yes. Who people, I, I'd n- never seen her before, except uh, a few weeks ago when we watched the movie Old, The Beach That Makes oh, You Oh, yeah. Old. And she's Isn't in Jojo that? Rabbit. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you have seen her before. I have. But again... If I haven't seen somebody in five movies, you I, haven't I'm, seen her I'm, before. I'm, I'm barely, in, I'm barely aware of their existence. Anyway, she is a, uh, she is, she is a, a, a woman who uh, gets accepted to a prestigious school of fashion in London. So she I goes, can, I could do that. But sorry, go on. What would you? What are you gonna? Were you gonna design puma hoodies? Grey puma hoodies do you think that I are grey and they've got puma across the chest? Well, yeah. I made no, this. Yeah, I reckon you could do it. Yeah, it looks really good. Like you could get that in a shop. I reckon you could sell that in a shop. Thank you. you know, it's from Redbubble. I just got Puma printed on it. Oh, that's I got good. It out to me. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I'd she like goes... to see those bloody fashion, <laughs> those fashion idiots do that. Oh, look at me! I'm designing a pattern. Just get a one from Redbubble. What are you thinking? <laughs> anyway, uh, she she's uh, moving to London. It's always been a dream. She's she's a young woman who's obsessed with the '60s and '60s music. Oh and, yeah. And uh, like her mother was before her, but her mother mother uh, passed away in tragic circumstances. Yep. But then she gets a uh, she gets a, a flat in London. Yep. Uh, and but then she starts having mysterious dreams mm. about a, a, a woman in the sixties. Dreams or realities? Oh, good question. Yeah. And uh, so this other woman played by Anya Taylor Joy is basically going about her life in the sixties, and it's Being like all glam, and it's like hip and happening, and it's mm. all cool sixties stuff or whatever. But what I guess I didn't expect from this is that. Um, it's quite sinister and like it takes a real spooky turn, you know? I just didn't know it was this kind of movie. Like I thought it was like a murder mystery. Yeah, yeah. And you can kind of like the movie Frequency, where you can solve sure. it in the past. Oh, and the I see what you're whatever. saying. All right, right, right. And it's I mean, there's a bit of like murder mystery in it. Yes. But it's it's kind of like a it's a spooky, it's like surreal. surreal. So well, yeah. I was gonna say, so and the reason we we're we're gonna talk about genre later yeah. is so when, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, or a hundred thousand years ago, I can't yep. remember. We watched the movie *Malignant*. Oh yes, and we, I think, overall, we quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun ride. Yeah, I spent a lot of it wondering why I was watching it, but by the end, I'm like, what? What a great time! <laughs> yeah. What a ride! Uh, so, but one of the issues I had with that movie was that it did feel quite unreal. It did kind of feel sure. kind of cheap and unfinished. Yeah, and I'm like, is this a horror movie trope? And I don't get it. Yeah, but it turns out it is a horror movie thing that we didn't get. Yeah. There's a there's a genre of movies. I mean, I got I get everything. But yeah, no, on. you get you get things, but I didn't get it. But there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a form of horror called giallo horror. Mm. Giallo being Italian for yellow. Okay, like apparently back in the day, uh, there were a lot of like lurid, cheap pulp fictiony novels with yellow covers. Pulp fiction. And so, and so in Italy, giallo is like a is like a form of like mystery horror suspense thriller. Sort of format, yeah. Okay, that yeah, is yeah. kind of like it, it's it's its own definite genre. Like it can be it can be horror stuff. It can be kind of more suspense. Yeah, uh, and it can be kind of like it's got it's got particular kind of mystery elements. It's slasher stuff. It's psychological. It's a bit of a bit of everything. It's a bit of everything. Yeah. And so it turns out, *Malignant* is sort of was a deliberate homage. It's to this that. jello thing you're talking about. It's a very about. jello, and this is also very jello. This yeah. is also like a deliberate homage to that. So I guess that's in. Yeah, that's that's coming to the forefront. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but this and this is this is very much that. And mm. I had a really good time with I this. Also I had a it good was time good. With it. Yeah. I also think uh, it also really beautifully captured like the settings of the modern day, but especially the '60s stuff. Yeah. Like the inclusion of like the clothing and the locations, and a lot of the music as well. Is that's a lot of the music I listened to growing up. Yeah, my right. parents, um, like Gold 104. Gold 104. No, they'd had like, you know, records and whatever, and they'd play stuff like this. So I'm like, I know all of this music. I know music. Yeah, right. Some people think I don't know music, but I uh-huh. know all the music in this it's movie. In the, there were a lot of interesting choices. It was yeah. a lot of kind of, you know, 
Um, no, I just wanted to tell people I knew. No, that's too. great. Yeah, that's really great for you. I'm so happy for you. Um, <laughs> it, it was a lot of it was a lot of kind of very famous songs, but kind of like covers by less well known artists, yeah, which yeah. I think was quite common in this era. Yeah, like it wasn't seen as weird if you just released an album and it was just like a Beatles cover and a a different artist cover. Another Beatles cover. Yeah, or just cut. Like, people weren't like, write your own songs. It was kind of like, we were still in that era of like, oh, this Beatles song is like a standard, so you can just do your own version and have a bit of fun. Um, Good soundtrack. Yeah, it was really good. um, The, the, you know, the, the... We got kind of this lurid neon 1960s. You know, some of it was quite glamorous and kind of, you know, beautiful, all the cars and all the fashion and all that sort of stuff. You know, very... And like, you know, beautiful theatres and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But also, you know, very the very grimy, you know, when it gets late at night in that era of just very yeah, absolutely. grimy and gross. Like you but think like, it's, yeah. like, oh, this is like, you don't really see like, it shows a lot of really sinister stuff yeah. from the era. And in the modern era, it was kind of, it's kind of more muted. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't, again, it wasn't that kind of. It wasn't of, dull. Everything's dull yeah. and gray. It like sort of had this crispness and you go, oh, okay, yeah, that's, this, this is a really good contrast to those. Yes. And as the sort of the, the. Uh, sort of as the ears sort of blend together. I thought mm. that was really effective. But speaking of also in terms of cinematography, because this is Edgar Wright, which we, I don't think we've mentioned. Did you watch yet. that Vanity Fair video that he did? I oh, know where he breaks down the scene. Yeah. No. Incredible. Is it about the dance sequence? Uh, it is about the dance so sequence, in yeah. the, So again, so uh, Thomas and Mackenzie's character, Ellie, she keeps dreaming of this this beautiful woman and mm. sort of uh, this, this, this glamorous woman of the past who she kind of wish she wishes she was yeah. alive then. And maybe she's... Real or not real. Maybe, she, or maybe, maybe, maybe it's a real person. Maybe happening. she's dreaming. Maybe she can affect it. Maybe she's yeah. not. Yeah, and so there's a scene in the movie where she meets um, Matt Smith's character who is sort of a record or a, a music producer, an events guy. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is. He's a, he's a, he's a hustler. He's a hustler of sorts. Yeah. Uh, and he's sort of in the, in the entertainment biz and he in the 60s he dances with Anya Taylor-Joy's yeah. character. Yeah. Um, but she's also being embodied by Thomas Thomas and Mackenzie's character. Yeah. So there's a scene where you see Matt Smith dancing in the center of the room, and it keeps switching out between yeah. the two female like characters. Seamlessly, yeah. But and it's it's a series of cowboy switches, I guess. It is. It's like an old. They could have. Yeah. I guess they could have done it in CG, or they could have done with yeah. a bunch of cuts. But clearly, they've gone. Okay, you run out and run behind yeah. the camera, and we'll bring in the other actor, and then we'll and it'll be like like you you they put their hand up high and you'll like walk them around and the hand will go out of frame and then yeah. when they walk back in it's the other person or whatever yeah. there's it, you should watch this vanity fair thing there's one cut in it yeah, right. there's a moment where they move past behind him mm. and then they like switch to the other side yeah. and it's not it's an edit it's such a well the guy the cameraman yes did it by hand it's not a track shot All right. and he just did the same movement twice and it just it's a net. It's I don't know how he did it. Yeah, yeah. It's so there's a, it's so it's four people. It's, it's the three actors and the cameraman and, and all the all the extras yeah. and stuff having to sort of do this. Well, like they all have to dance together essentially. Yeah, and like I, I mentioned this because you know Edgar Wright is sort of famous for weirdly comical cuts, cowboy and switches, and, cowboy switches, and people you know, yeah, jumping in and out of frame in silly ways. He kind goes of thing. through a number of them in the same video. He yeah. doesn't just do that. He does the like the Scott Pilgrim one where Scott Pilgrim like leaps out the window. He does the the fence jump. Yeah, right. Uh, which they from, did in Hot, Hot Fuzz, Fuzz yeah. and, and there's also one in Sean that did obviously. But yeah, he goes. He does a bunch of scenes, and I was going to say one of those things that I was watching this week. But yeah, fascinating. Yeah, really and it's interesting. yeah, and it's you know this again. This is. Uh, you know, Edgar Wright is most known for kind of comedic stuff. Yeah. Th- this isn't, this has a small number of jokes in it, but it's not. It's not overly. It's not overly comedic. I'd say it's more like, it's probably not even as funny as um his last one, Baby, Baby Driver. Driver yeah. Baby Driver's probably got more jokes. I than, think so, yeah. Than this does. Uh, because, yeah, because it's kind of a, it's a it's a spooky time, as mentioned. Not really like anything he's he's done before, mm. I would say also. I also, um. It's, it is kind of disappointing that it isn't doing super well. I'm thinking it's probably going to find a home now, I'd imagine, because now it is on streaming right now. Like yeah, right. It, um, it's, I think it's been out for uh, at least a few weeks. Mm. But um, something else I was going to say about it, there's one shot as well where a lot of the time she's like in the mirror, uh-huh. but they're really there like that's and they're mirroring each other, but they're just standing next to each other and right. it's made to look like that. Like it's so much of this is done practically, which is a uh, saves on budget because then you don't need to. CGI, CGI the, yeah. whole, uh-huh. the whole, the whole, th- you know, the whole kit and caboodle of yes. it. Yes, but yeah, I think there's, and this is one of the things that came out in the Vanity Fair article is like a lot of the things that he does 
are vi- like the shots are so well thought out. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he talked about the Shaun of the Dead shot where he walks to the shops and it's yep. a one take. Mm-hmm. And it, if you've seen Shaun of the Dead, there's a moment where he walks to the shops from his home, from his flat, then he walks back and then he does the same thing after the apocalypse and he's passing all the carnage and all the people that he saw before. Some have been zombified, some are dead or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, windows smashed in and he doesn't notice. And the reason he made it so complicated and put so many sight gags in it was because he was told that they're definitely going to cut it. So he's like, fuck it then. I'm going to pack it with like a whole bunch of stuff so this cannot be cut. So I think he took the lesson from that of like make every shot really compelling. And you really uh see that in something like this. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Anyway, we should probably leave it there, I guess. It's pretty gruesome. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Although. It's more like. Paint, but blood splatter. Than yeah, like seeing there are there are some moments in it where I'm like, oh, okay, if this were a if this were an actual if this were from a different era, or if it if it were you know like a famous horror yeah genre director, maybe mm. it would be more gruesome. But I think like there, there's moments I think where he's definitely gone or someone's definitely gone. Mm. Okay, let's not have that happen because yeah. it's a little too far for for sort of mainstream sensibilities, yeah. I guess. But uh, I'm gonna say best movie ever. I, didn't, I had a good time with this. Yeah, and I didn't. I I feel like. I, I, it, it's very compelling, but not in a way where I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. No. Like, I'm not going to be like, this. There's, yeah. there's a solution to this, yeah. and I'm going to figure out what is the deal. Like, I'm just going it, to, it, again, like you said, like all yeah. the scenes are compelling and sort of beautifully shot, and I was like, I'm just going to let this sort of roll through yeah. and just enjoy it, and and uh, I, I don't have to be like, I'm going to figure out if this is time travel or magic or if it's if it's somebody who's gone mad yeah. or whatever. I'm just like, I'm just going to see where it ends up. It. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Uh, spoil some spoilers. Should we do some spoilers? Let's do some spoilers. Okay. Um, okay, let's do some spoilers. I think she still would have gone to jail because she nearly stabbed that woman. <laughs> oh, it's, yes, that's, I don't think you'd just be like. Let's that's go that's back that's to my first work. thing. So in the in the um, there's a scene in a library yeah. where Thomas and Mackenzie's character she starts seeing hallucinations mm. of all of of these these men that were you know assaulting the the woman in the 60s and yeah. and were just generally terrible people and she feels like she's being pursued by them and she grabs a knife she's like i'm going to i'm going to sort this out i'm not going to be afraid and she like throw a knife into this hallucination of a man and it turns out to be one of her fellow students and her sort of the love interest character has grabbed her arm like millimetres from stabbing this woman in the head. Yeah. I reckon in like a malignant style horror movie she would have definitely stabbed that woman in the head. Yeah, you probably but they, but they were like, whoa, no, this... Because she has to go and live her life after this. Well, exactly. I think they were like, we need to we need, we need, need to give this character yeah. like an out, not even a potential for a sequel, but mm. we, I think we want we want this character not to be doomed yes. by the end of this and i think a lot of horror movies sort of more the especially the stuff we've seen recently like yeah. the malignants and what have you uh they'd be like yeah we want to doom this character to yeah. we're going to put him in an asylum at the end of this yeah exactly although at the end of this she does sort of uh she she is still seeing visions of yeah. of, of this woman and who wonder, turned out to be oh yeah uh, uh, diana rigg last the, performance the, the, the late yeah. the late dame diana rigg that's right yeah uh, that was yeah. a that was a fun inclusion i didn't know she was in this and she passed i guess just after this yes um, uh, formerly of the avengers yes not the not the american avengers the british avengers the, british, the good one <laughs> that's right uh she was also the um house tyrell in game of thrones that's right, recently yeah. and she was in bond and whatever oh, of course yeah yeah she's tracy bond she's tracy bond well her real name's diana rigg i should point that out but uh, but yeah, and like Terrence Stamp makes an appearance. Like yeah. there's a few like uh, Sam Claflin like appears Sam for five very seconds. Very briefly, in he's this. Uh, he's um, credited as punter number five. He doesn't even get a name. Oh really? But he yeah. So and I, I again I love the idea that uh, Ellie assumes that Terrence Stamp's character yeah well, she comes to believe that 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 Matt, Matt Smith, Smith Matt yeah. Smith evolved into Terrence Stamp, but of course yeah. he he didn't. Yeah, it was actually the the vice cop. All evolved along. into getting stabbed. He evolved into getting hit a, by a car. Put in a floor or whatever. Yeah, that's I, right. Yeah, I also thought it was interesting that they didn't paint like all the murders as like being heroic, but also yeah. they didn't paint the men who she murdered as good people. Even though it was like Avengers have been murdered or whatever. Well, that's true. It was yeah. kind of a bit of like, well, she definitely shouldn't have murdered them. I think that's very jalo, James. But at the same time, it's like extremely jalo because they're like save us, and she's like, nah. I don't reckon I <laughs> reckon, reckon I probably won't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I also thought it was interesting where you never kind of get the idea of like, is this a is is it is this a is this ghosts? Is yeah. it ghosts and mental health? Is it the room that she's in? Is it something her mother yeah. had? Is that because her mother committed suicide? I you think find that's out. Very jello. I thought so too. It's very jello. 
uh, because... It was all jello. It was extremely jello. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked that of, like, maybe it was a combination of all of it. Yeah. Maybe that this similar affliction happened to her mother and drove her mad and whatever and, you know, I thought that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Often, often, uh, here's some characteristics of Jalo, James. We're all learning here. Uh, I'm sick of this thing <laughs> that I just learned of, mate. Right, 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 right. Sick of it already. Uh, let me see. Jalo Films uh, categorizes gruesome murder mystery thrillers, combines suspense elements of detective fiction with scenes of shocking horror, excessive bloodletting, stylish camera work, and often jarring musical arrangements. So that's Edgar Wright all over. Definitely. Except for all, no, even the gruesome. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe his life has been leading up to this. Maybe it has been. Um, I wonder what he's doing next. The typical Jalo protagonist is an outsider of some sort, often a traveller, tourist, outcast, or even an alienated or disgraced private investigator, and frequently a young woman an who is lonely or alone in a strange or foreign situation environment. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. There you go. I did definitely feel like that, that yeah. element of like away in a foreign place and like, and I'm like, oh, that's that's definitely some young people business. <laughs> I'm like, as an adult, if I was presented with like these people who are like, oh, you can't come to the pub with us, I'd be like, shut up, get out of here, <laughs> shut up. Who are you? You you are no one. Get out of here. We don't know what his next movie is. Mm. At this point. So, okay. oh wait, it might direct to Stephen King. Oh, he did the Sparks. Bro- again. I haven't seen the Sparks Brothers documentary. No, neither have I. No. Apparently, that's very good. Mm. Anyway, should we move it along? Let's move it along. All right, I've got a list here. You sent it over from ScreenRant.com. Yeah. It says 10 movie uh, gin rays that died in the last decade. Movie gun rays, Gun please. rays. Did gun, gun ray die? In... Yeah, he, he got killed by um, Anakin Skywalker. Did his spaceship blow up? No, he stabbed him. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, That's okay, do too. Yeah. Um, so, no, and, uh, so do you want me to we'll go through these lists together? Yeah. And or number... you just wing it. Yeah, you know? no, it's better to have ideas okay, great. from someone else. <laughs> So number 10, they've got here parody movies. And we're talking like... Superhero movie. Super, yeah, super fast. S- yes. Disaster movie. Uh, the picture they've got here is from the movie Vampires Suck, which is a Twilight um, yeah. movie. What I've got... Oh, I love, love them when they've gone on, gone, go, 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 going on here. So Bella, normally she's holding an apple. Oh, yes. She's holding an onion. Nice. In the background, there's Lady Gaga. Nice. Uh, the guys who are playing Team Edward, Team Jacob... Yes, have the, T-shirts uh, on them. Yeah, but they have reverse... Like, Jacob's got Team Edward and Whoa, Edward's got Team Jacob. Oh, nice. See, that's the thing only the true fans would pick up on. Yeah. Uh, but I think these are dead, right? They don't these do are those dead anymore. because I think... They're bad and they've always been they're bad? They're bad and they've always been bad, but also internet humour has overtaken them. Yeah, they're too, they're not, you can't make them fast enough. No, exactly. Like, if, if... They were always slow. They were exactly, always late. They were always, they were always like a year behind or at, at least. Yeah. Whereas these days, if, you know... A new if Eternals comes out, yeah. there'll be Eternals parody sketches that day. Yeah, you know, or even even before the mo- the movie is out, people have watched the trailers and, and like knocked out some sketches. You'd have already. to also put in jokes for like things that are out now that like, and maybe nobody knows what Eternals is in a year, and it's like, who's what in this? Yeah, that's you know true. What I mean? Yeah, exactly. But with internet content, people yeah, would just be like it's hot and it's fresh. It's hot and it's fresh, and you get your five million views or whatever. Yeah, on Dorkly. On Dorkly. On Dorkly. Which is maybe just a YouTube channel now. <laughs> I don't know. They do little 8-bit things or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, as soon as, you know, and then you just move on to the next thing. And if nobody knows who Eternals is in a year, well, you know. Well, shut up. Yeah, shut up. Number nine's in a year. Should they come back then? No. Would you see a big budget one? What would they? No. What would they, and also, it'd just be superhero movie again. It would. It'd just be. It'd just, that, apparently, that one's all right. Yeah, people have reckoned. People have been yeah. like, that one's actually pretty. Like, it's a pretty solid I like parody of like the Sam Raimi Spider Man yeah. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, like. And so there's some jokes in the scary movie ones that I think work mm, from memory. Yeah, but realistically, at this point, the only thing that they could really parody is. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. They could. They could. It'd have to be just more superhero movies and then a Machine Gun Kelly joke or whatever. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that is fun. Um, next well, up, at number nine. Go on. Or oh, have you got a different list there? Do you want to do uh, no, I'm different... just looking at where the Sparks Brothers are available to, to okay. download. But how about this? Yeah. What about your um? What about your Seth Rogen style comedies? Speaking of comedies, I don't know. If you they know, like your dead. um, yeah, like a super bad. Yeah, super bad, or a, or a, even a um. 40-year-old virgin. 40-year-old virgin, something like that. Like the heavily improved kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe not as much. I think what you need, mm-hmm. you need a fresh group of like comedic actors. Yeah, So, but is this genre dead, do you feel? I, don't know. I, feel I like think we're of... in between something. Yeah, I think I think, something's I think what off, happened, so. because I was thinking about it and I feel like... I was also thinking about it. And this is what that, I think. That mo- you know that movie Scarlett Johansson's in it? 
And she, it's a group of women. Rides women's night. Yeah, something like that. And they hire a stripper and then they actually yeah, yeah, kill yeah. a stripper and blah, blah, blah. I feel like that was kind of, that feels like the last gasp of that stuff. But I don't think that's improvised in any way. No. I think what happened is they went and they saw the Seth Rogans and the Jonah Hills and all that. What's the director? What's his name? Does um, all of them? Um, he doesn't <laughs> do all of them. Long. No, he doesn't do all of them. This is 40, was that it? Judd Apatow. Apatow. And he doesn't even make movies like that anymore, No, that's really. true. Yeah. N- neither do, you know, Seth Rogen. They no. did that pi- American Pickle, but it's not really. Yeah, yeah. That, Ro- that one had to be, like, meticulously scripted because yeah, yeah. he plays both of the characters. Yes, exactly. So you can't improv no, on that. No, that's right. Seth, I mean, Seth Rogen and his producing partner now produce, like, The Boys and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So, like, everybody's Goldberg, moved on. Yeah. And I think it's because some of that was kind of lightning in a bottle and it became really yeah. big. But I think... At, you know, when, when like a 40 year old version became very popular, yeah. Um, I'm sure other movie studios were like, let's get some of that. Yeah. But they could. I think the hangover is probably a result yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Well. But they sort of, I guess they probably couldn't really trust, you know, they couldn't just go bring a bunch of actors in a room and we'll yeah. have all improv because you can't trust everybody to be able to do that and make it funny. Yeah. And I think also the people producing those movies, like yeah. I'm sure Judd Apatow was like, Seth Rogen's really funny. I'll just let him do his thing. Yes. If you, if you just get an unrelated group of people and you try to get them to do that sort of stuff, it may not work. So then it just, you just have to do it scripted. You have to make it look like a 40-year-old yeah. version, but it's tightly scripted. So it's not as yeah. funny. There's People don't take chances with dialogue and, and stuff yeah. like that and jokes. So the really funny stuff is is cut away before anything's even been filmed. Mm. Yeah, you might be right. Maybe, and I don't know. Also, I guess he also – like he – like directed a bunch of this stuff, but he didn't like like he didn't direct super bad. Yes. Like he produced a bunch of other stuff. Like yeah, yeah. I think the last one of these he probably did was Trainwreck in 2015, which is kind of like yeah, because yeah. it's Bill Hader Schumer. and Amy Schumer, and there's yeah. a bit of I, to be fair, I haven't seen it. There's a fair bit of improv in that, I think. But then it's like he did a Gary Shandling doc, The King of Staten Island, and even like. Yeah, the Kamal Nanjiani movie that yeah. he did. Like he didn't, sick, he yeah. didn't direct that. Yes. So he's doing stuff like like more serious kind of. I guess it's more in line with the movies like This Is Forty, yeah. Which I, which to me is that's my favorite movie of his. Yes. Yeah. it's fucking hilarious and sad and goes forever and just kind of ends. <laughs> that's what I like about yeah. it. Um, and it's also a sequel to Forty Year Old Virgin, sort of. He's got an upcoming movie called The Bubble, okay. which is an American comedy film, uh, and it's got Karen Gillan and Fred Armisen and David mm-hmm. Duchovny and Keegan Michael Key. But like, yeah. we don't really know what it is. That's an interesting one though. Comedy nah, is should a it fun come back? Place. But yeah. I think you're right when you said it needs another group of young yeah. people. It needs to. We need to get that. And I don't know. I sh- I guess they knew each other beforehand, like all those yeah, that all group of, did, of people. Yeah. Like we need another. We need somebody to take a chance on a director who has a bunch of funny friends who can just kind of be that be the this generation's that group who can all work How together. How funny well. am I? Do you reckon my friends could do it? My funny friends. Ooh. I think Barry's funny enough, yeah. but I think he would collapse in front of the camera. <laughs> like I think he, I reckon like Bar- he'd physically collapse. I think he'd physically collapse. I think he's one of those guys who's very funny, yeah. but then as soon as you put a camera on, he'd, he'd stop being funny. It's fun. Well, we have filmed some very funny stuff oh, of good. Barry, but yeah, it's interesting because Barry is he's probably the funniest person I know, mm. um, but he's just have no interest in doing anything with that, like mm. at all. Yeah. Just doesn't want to, yeah. Because Claire at one point wanted to do like a podcast with him and Chanel, which where they talk about like his dating life. Okay. Because he's very funny, but he's like, I don't want to, I don't want anything mm. to do with that. Yeah. Anyway, good night. Well, if you ever meet him, I've met very, him. No, not you, other people. Okay, my right. friend Barry. Oh, sure, sure, sure. He's very funny. Uh, what about uh, this is from Screen Man? Ensemble cast romantic movies. Oh, so like, like uh, Love Actually. There was Love Actually. And then mm. there was like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and It's My Birthday and sure, sure, Happy sure. Birthday mm-hmm. and Birthday. Yeah. Uh, welcome Happy to Birthday. Day. Happy Birthday. Day. Yeah. And it's just like love actually. B-Day short for birthday, not bidet, <laughs> the kind of toilet thing. Then, of course, there's Happy Bidet. Happy which Bidet, is which is <laughs> brackets, which is the toilet thing. That's the prequel. <laughs> the one that washes your butthole. Yes, <laughs> Um, but like love actually, and I know it's like saccharine and like weirdly problematic in places and yeah. all of those things, but it's, it's a good movie for the most part. Yeah. And it's like, it's got good jokes and it's a great cast and each mm. little segment kind of works and some are fun. Yeah. And then Emma Thompson's having a complete breakdown and whatever. But then most of the other ones are just like, it's New York city, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. Yeah. I feel like that's a genre that they sort of attempt to resurrect on Netflix every once in a while. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. not with as big of a cast. It might be easy to film, though, because you can do them all separately. That's true, so yeah. So you can be like, we can get 
so and so Bradley Cooper in for four minutes, mm. and he does his bit where he goes, "It's New York, baby. This is New York." Does There's every, one called New York, I love you, or something. Do, does every love story and love actually combine together? Like, no, it's in the same universe where some some, knowledge, are some crossover. Yeah, but, that's what I thought. But it's okay, his all. Yeah. They made a sequel, like mm. a Red Nose Day special sequel oh, or whatever. I see. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. Kira Knightley's finally of age, the Red Nose Day special. <laughs> they, it's not weird anymore. They celebrate Kira Knightley's 18th birthday. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think she's supposed to be like 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. not like yeah. 17. Oh, but or, speaking of Kira Knightley, yeah. pirate movies. Yeah. They I, were dead, they lived, then they died again. I mean, they died in the same franchise though, didn't they, really? Well, oh, well yeah. I mean, the, obviously like we had the, you know, back in the – Dawn of Time, we had yeah, Errol Flynn's. Yes. That was the swash, the, the very origin of the swashbuckler genre. There was a Gina Davis one in the Cuts 90s. Cutthroat Island. Yeah, yeah. That's, I was going to say that. So that. And that was a massive flop, as I understand yes, it. Yes, it was. Which is a shame because I really like Gina Davis. Yeah. Um, there was a there was an Ardman Pirates movie. Oh, yeah. Like a stop motion one. Yeah, right. Um, they've got some other Pirates movies they've got here. Pan is a pirate movie. Yeah. Uh, Under Siege is technically a pirate movie. Yes. The Phantom is a pirate movie. Mm. Uh, Treasure Planet is a pirate movie. So these are all... Captain Phillips is a pirate now, movie. Now, except with the exception of Captain Phillips, that's all sort of interim. Like, that is yeah. in between. Like, Cutthroat Island sank. So did all of these ones. Yeah. And then you're right. Pirate movies got a complete resurgence, an absolute... Just blockbuster return. Muppet's Treasure Island. Muppet Tre- Ice Age Continental Drift. All right, stop it. Uh, like they had an absolute like blockbuster resurgence. Yeah. With Pirates of the Caribbean, and then that just chewed up the entire world Boy, interest in pirates for like a decade. Yeah. And then it just then it just completely deflated and they again. Released, and now we hate them again. They released too too many or whatever yeah, yeah. and killed it. Yeah. yeah. I still think if they're gonna do it. Because I think they recasting and they wanted to they wanted to get Margot Robbie in a Pirates reboot or whatever. Oh like, yeah, get that's Zoe fine. Saldana. She's already in it. She's oh, already yeah. in the universe. Just bring yeah. her back. Anyway, Here's something I learned this week. You know the TV series Titans that you don't watch. Yeah, three of the cast members are Australian. Three of the cast members. Br- Brenton Thwaites, who is in I know uh, the, Pir- the Pirates movie. Yeah, Tegan Croft, who's Raven, and whoever plays Superboy, uh, who I don't have there, but they're all Australian. I know him. No, you don't. Superboy. Joshua yeah, Orpen. Yeah, yeah, I know him. You know Joshua Orpen or you know Superboy? I know them both. Huh. They're two separate people. Nice. Keep the cover up. I like that. <laughs> it's really good. No, they're two separate people. One is the actor and one is yes, the Yes, that is correct, yeah. This one just says Lego Movie Clones. So it's okay. like Emoji Movie, Ugly right. Dolls, Playmobil the Movie. Oh, before we go ahead, oh, sorry, uh, go should they bring back Pirates movies? No. What, uh, what about that one with Mar- Margot Robbie slash Zoe Saldana? No, I think if you're going to bring back a pirate movie – don't make it like a fun pirate romp. Oh, you like, think they so? don't all have to be fun. More like the terror. Yeah. Just awful like, stuff. Yeah, or seas. like Master, Master and, and Commander. Commander or something like that. Isn't there like 10 books of that left to There's 150,000 books. Yeah. Yeah. That's, they, they, can't, they just released them unfinished at this point. They're yeah. like, whatever, no one reads well, it's these. interesting. Um, where are we going next with this? Lego Movie Clones. Okay. I, yeah. I don't want them back. We can skip that one. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. I think one of the reasons, maybe the reason that pirates movies have – died off is also because it's it's the past and that world has sort of been explored yeah. maybe, which I would say is the same for like Westerns. Like I think maybe the reason Westerns died off yeah. like as a genre because they used to be huge. They did it is all. Like every, they did it all and like, every, you know, we've, we've really done to death the idea of like, well, there's the undiscovered frontier and we're going to, we're yeah. going to, we're going to map the undiscovered frontier, but also, the time for cowboys is over, isn't it? You know, cowboys. <laughs> oh God, yeah. But it's just he's, this the world guy, is changing. This guy is the last cowboy, and look, he's a cowboy, but he's he's looking out over a freeway, <laughs> and there's there's a lot of electric oh, vehicles autom- on the freeway. It's an automobile. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, you're right. That cowboy is driving a Hyundai Elantra. But I guess the difference is that they you you still get like one good cowboy. Well, as movie we mentioned, the year. harder they fall, which is yeah. really good. You get at least but one. His, a year. But that's, I think that's. Bone that, Tomahawk. That's true. But I think I think The Heart of They Fall is interesting because that is undiscovered territory in the sense that mm. there were a lot of black cowboys yeah. for real in real life, but we never we've we've barely ever seen any yeah. stories like that. That's I, such a and fun this is, movie. And as this well. is but that and then The Heart of They Falls based on a real you know, yeah. real group of outlaws and et cetera. Like a fictional story, but yeah, like yeah, a real yeah. Group, but I think yeah. that's you know that that's a fresh take on it. And I'm very happy to see that. But I'm I'm I am tired of like this guy. Used to be the biggest big time cowboy, oh, but now that, you can't there, yeah. you can't fight bureaucracy with a couple of six shooters, can you? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna show you some of the old cowboy ways if you don't mind me saying so. I do mind. 
So I apologise. <laughs> I'll go away and die in the desert or whatever <laughs> with a snake in my boot. <laughs> Uh, this one just says celebrity driven prestige pictures, and it's a picture of Reese Witherspoon with um, Owen Wilson. And I'm like, what the fuck movie is that? Right. Though he's in a new movie with J Lo where she's like, I'm a big celebrity, and they get married or whatever. Yeah. It's called Marry Me. Oh, is that that's based on a web comic? Is it? Yes. I love web comic. Mm. Yeah. Cyanide and Happiness. Yeah, it's based on Cyanide. Quick name and another one. Penny Arcade. Quick name another one. Player versus player. <laughs> Quick name another one. Control alt delete. Quick name another one. Uh, there's Doc a, Ninja. Yeah, there's a there's <laughs> a um, Doctor McNinja. Is that his Doctor name? McNinja. There's a. I follow a couple of um. I follow a couple of Twitter accounts. The premise of which is fake web comics from like the early two thousands. <laughs> okay, yeah. And there's one. I've, I've I will find it. Um, the premise of which is basically that the create the the, the is this old gamer comic. Uh, yeah. like web comic. They're all old and, gamer comics. And they're all and it, it's absolutely awful, but the creator is a guy called Sean Tuckley who's currently in prison <laughs> for undisclosed reasons. <laughs> and like there's a guy posting these old things like on their behalf and it's Oh, look that up. And it's just and everybody plays along. Yeah. Like they all like whenever like an archive comic comes up, you know, everybody in the replies is talking about how they used to be banned from his forums cuz they <laughs> said that Penny Arcade was Red better. Ring of Death? Red Ring of Death. There, there it is. Go. People should follow Red Ring of Death. Oh, there's like four people who follow this. That's no, got 1,800 people. Oh, man, this is like so that era. And also there's another one just called uh, Power Up Comics Official yep. at Shadow Power Up. And it's just like, it's just epic. It's just all epic gamer comics. Oh, I man, love is it. And there's that one of like, I don't remember which one it is, but the per- the, the woman who has the miscarriage. Oh, that's, that's um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's called Loss. <laughs> yeah. I think that's control alt delay. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, oh, I, more, pe- maybe more people should follow Red Ring of Death. I just did. Nice. Um, anyway, th- th- talking about celebrity driven prestige pitches, they're, they're like, how how do you know? Uh, which might be this movie. The, yeah, which, how uh, do you know? I've never heard of it. Uh, the Rum Diary. Oh, that. Oh, Johnny live, Depp, sure. Yeah, Live by Night, Ad Astra. This is a very vague. Yeah, it's this just is like a very vague celebrities list. in movies. I, I, I don't believe it. I think the idea of celebrity has definitely shifted. Definitely, And yeah. often it's about like the IP and the idea yeah. as opposed to like the celebrity. There are exceptions, but... Um, well, see, that's the thing because obviously Brad Pitt. Bradley Pitt, I think Bradley you mean Pitt, his name very, is. very famous, very handsome. Yeah. I think I would, if he just, because he, you know, he's, he's, he re- Releases movies quite rarely now. Yeah, like, it was once upon a time in Hollywood and Ad Astra, and that might have been the same year. Yeah, like I feel like very much. I would. I'm not. I'm not going to be like, oh, Kate Hudson. I'm, I'm going to watch a Kate Hudson movie no matter what. But I probably would watch a Brad. At least I'd give it if if Brad Pitt had a new movie coming. Well, out. Well, there's like, a few that he released that I didn't. It was, there was one he did on Netflix about where he's like a like a colonel and he's in the I'm army. Colonel Brad Pitt. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but I started to watch and I'm like, this isn't, it's supposed to be a comedy, I think. Oh, of. I see. Well, that's a shame. What was it called? Well, maybe I agree with this article then. What was it called? The King? Was it called The King? No. Hang on. What, what? Brad Pitt filmography. He's not even in these movies. Oh, no. I just named a bunch of movies he's also not in. Yeah. What the hell is that movie called? Oh, he's in Deadpool too. Oh, War yeah. Machine. It was called War Machine from 2017. All oh, right, okay. And it was whatever. Okay. It was also like the, the weatherman in Jim Jeffries. Talk show or whatever, huh. or just like they'd cut to Brad Pitt and he's like, "Hey, I'm Brad Pitt." That's interesting. I'm just doing the weather, well, or whatever. Okay. Well, apparently he's a very big fan of Mark Maron. Yeah. Like when he did, he and DiCaprio did WTF Mark Maron's podcast mm. for when they were doing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and yeah. like he was super jazzed and he set it up. And yeah. He's like, "It's great, great to be here." I mean, right? it's just, I guess he's just a dude, isn't he? He's just a dude, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So look, um, with the exception of Brad Pitt and that Brad Pitt movie you mentioned, yeah. Most celebrities, I'm not like, yeah, I've I got to see this because it's got Bruce Willis in it. Yeah, there was a time when I'm like, I'd see anything Edward Norton does because yeah. he's doing really interesting things. But I think the Italian job broke him. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah. And then he was just like, okay, whatever. You know what? Probably maybe Clooney Pitt. Maybe it's an, maybe it's an issue. But I don't see all the Clooney movies either. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. I don't but know. I mean, maybe that's just an era of like, oh, man, mo- movies can be good. Like maybe when I – First hit that. You know what does look good? That Netflix one about the comet hitting Earth or whatever, which oh, is yeah, coming with out soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a trailer for that this week, mm. um, which looks really good. That's got Kate Blanchett, who's amazing. Mm. I'd see like a 
There's not a lot of movies I wouldn't watch with Kate Blanchett either. Speaking of movies where I'm like, yeah, oh, this, true, is, this yeah. is probably at the very least interesting mm. if she's in it. Have you ever seen Little Fish? This, I mean, most movies in Australia. I've seen Big Fish. No, this is a movie called Little It's I about the same this. era. No. Uh, it's, it's about like heroin in Australia. Oh, I have seen Little Fish. Yeah. Yes, it was Which on the ABC one Most time. movies are from yes. a, in Australia about heroin in yeah, Australia. That's but true. It's very good. Mm. Uh, this one just says Sword and Sandals Epics. And it's yeah. got an interesting caveat in it, but it's talking about so after 300 and like Gladiator, there was yeah. a bunch of flops. There was like Legend of Hercules, Pompeii, Exodus, Gods and Kings. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, the Mummy remake, which I guess is Sword and Sandals, but they said the only exception to this kind of film is Aladdin. But like Aladdin isn't a Sword and Sandals. No. Like these are different movies. Yeah. I'd, Sword and Sandal for me it's is. like Troy yeah, would be it's, a it's, Brad Pitt. It's, Either histo- like properly historical or like historical myth, yeah. Like that era of like, well, maybe they were gods, but maybe they were just men with big abs or whatever. Exactly. Uh, and like a, the tiniest hint of magic. Ben Hur, remember that? Ben Hur, exactly. Re- yeah. But well, I mean, it, it, it some like they it survives on screen a little bit. Like Hercules, small screen. Hercules was around for a that's little true. bit. Was it? Do you remember like there was that <laughs> this fucking movie? Like, do you remember? <laughs> I don't know. Alexander the Great. Look at that. Remember that one with Colin Farrell and no, but this, that's a, this is like a that's great hair. Of, that's great hair and Colin Farrell. Who's that the, woman? Who's is that? Angela that's Angela Jolie. Jolie. And in the background is um one eyed Val Kilmer. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, it made, it made like no money. And wow, it, they t- it took forever to make it. Ah, uh, should they bring those back? Nah. Should they finally do that Gladiator sequel where he is he's got a warring? They the are moment. doing that. They're oh. making a Gladiator sequel. Right. Ridley Scott's doing it. I think right. it's his next movie. Right. And I say good. Ridley Scott say something mean about Marvel movies. Yeah, one? somebody he, made him say something yeah, exactly, about it. He's like, exactly. what do you think? And he's like, they're boring. And everyone yeah. went, boo, Ridley Scott. <laughs> well, maybe your movies, maybe all your movies are boring, Ridley Scott, maybe. Burr. No, his movies are generally pretty good. Yeah, they're generally good, aren't they? I mean, there's some ones that aren't good, but the I... The recent ones. I think it's more the script. No, because what about um, there's yes. The Martian? Oh, the Martian. Uh, there was something else he did recently that okay. was good. But even like, I don't like his new Alien movies, but they're directed well. They're just yeah. not written very well. I think it's probably... Anything he's been forced to make because it's an extension of his old IP. Oh, okay. I think yeah. that's probably bad. IP. Now that's funny. <laughs> that's right. Um, let me just check what the uh, oh he um Death on an Isle he produced. I didn't know that. So director, yeah. So he's doing Gladiator Two. Mm. Um, House of Gucci is apparently very good. He did the last duel. That's what I wanted to say. Last cool duel. Killest duel. How, <laughs> how cool is this duel? You reckon? Well, let's see it. Yeah. But then we'll decide whether or not it's cool. Uh, yeah, so Gladiator 2 is the son of, like, he's, it's his, uh, you know, the, the woman, the sister of the emperor in it? Yeah. And she's got a son. And yeah. she's like, I love Gladiator. Mm. And then Russell Crowe dies at the yes. end of Gladiator. And so it's him grown up. Uh-uh. And so it's not going to be the original idea where he's like the god of war. Yeah, and yeah. he's like reincarnated. Powering through heaven yeah, or whatever. Which would have been. I think Nick Cave wrote that as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I would have wanted to see that. And also, Russell Crowe's not doing. Sword and fucking sandals. No, that's out absolutely not. No. But I think he might be in it. Maybe they'll put him in it as a ghost, and he'll be like, "Yeah, all right, I'll get abs for this. I'll do it one more time." <laughs> but um, you know why you, then you don't really do these as much? Because they're fucking expensive. Yeah, you gotta, you like, you really gotta put a lot of money into them, you know? Yeah. Uh, next up, everybody's got to be crazy ripped. Got to be crazy ripped. Mm. But if you look at Russell Clothes, Russell Clothes, Russell Clothes is. If you clothes, look at and, Russell Crowe's Russell Clothes, yeah. which is what he calls them. If you look he's at like, him, oh, I gotta, gotta. <laughs> Get up and pick my Russell clothes. Look how rustly my clothes are. That's good, Russell clothes. <laughs> he's not crazy ripped in Gladiator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's fit, but he's not like how you'd have to do it now. That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, so the, the the he's fitter in virtuosity. No, that's true. Mm. Is uh, the 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 yardstick for how fit you have to get has only increased mm. over the years. So these exactly. Days. Though he's been, he got I think he got abs for Robin Hood. Oh. Yeah. But, you know, every now and then, it's not really sword and... This is like 10 years old now, but like Centurion, remember that one? Nope. That was with um, Fassbender? Nope. And he's it's stuck in England? No. Nope. He's a Centurion and nope. he's on the run from like the Horde? None of these. What no. about the Channing Tatum movie about the eagle that he has to get back and he's a Roman Centurion and Jamie Bell's in it? Magic Mike. It's called Double Let XL. Me, no, it's called Let Me Get This Eagle. <laughs> I've not seen it. Let me get it. No, I Give me it. the eagle back. Wow. I'm Roman. Uh, I remember, like, anyway, they they make him every now and then. But I guess that is an example of movies that did not do well. Correct. You've definitely seen Centurion. I have I'm pretty not. sure we saw it together. Nope. No, nah, we have. I've not seen Give it. Give me $100. No. <laughs> it says found footage horror movies. They're still going strong, I think they? they. I mean, they're not as strong. Mm. What's a recent one? Give me a good one. 
uh, Paranormal Activity 5. I think they did release a new one of those. I think uh, they did. Searching. That's sort of found. That's not really found footage, is it? No, but that's an interesting genre. Yeah. But I I think. What do you think? I think that that sort of genre has never really caught on. Searching, of course, being the John Cho movie. Yeah. That is, that is uh, built entirely around looking at some people, various computer screens and. Apparently phone it counts and stuff. as. Because uh, I'm looking at a list. Okay. And but well, they, I mean. They did Blair Witch 2016. Yeah. Like they've been making. I them. think that is. A, I mean, the reason I think that never really caught on is just because it's so difficult to make a single screen compelling for yeah. 90 minutes. And, and by that, I mean a single computer well, screen. Well, there has been Zoom movies, and I'm even talking before the pandemic. Zoom that movies? One, it's like. I call them zoomies. It's like Truth or Dare. The Truth or Dare one where the guy puts his hand in the blender or whatever. You think you've Dune. I am thinking of the movie, movie Dune. Dune. That's sword and sandals. Where the woman's like, put your, Paul Atreides, put your hand in a blender. I don't want to put my hand in a blender. Mm. I'll be after it. It's for the movie Dune. Yes. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, this is actually fun now that I'm doing it. Do you think it. this movie's going to do well? We have no idea. But no. <laughs> Not if you keep talking about it in the movie, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. Uh, did you watch 2015's Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension? No. You didn't, did you? No. Give me $100. I was too busy watching the Maze Runner, The Death Cure. Oh, wow. We usually have to talk about that because we're up to. Well, there's two. Ver- they put in two different ones. But yeah. There's young adult fantasy. And there's young adult dystopian Yeah, which is sci-fi. like Harry Potter, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, and then there's like Beautiful Creatures, Seventh Son, Pan, Wrinkle in Time, um, et cetera. There's also and but then we've got comedy, uh, comedian driven comedies, which I think we covered already. Really, mm. comedian driven comedies aren't a thing anymore. I Again, think... I think no, I think it's a, but I think they mean in the sense of are yeah, oh, you going to see a Will Ferrell movie? Yeah, well, that is. You know, well, the you... picture they've got here is of Sherlock Holmes. Oh yes. And then number two, we've got young adult dystopian sci-fi. Mm. So your Hunger Gamesings, your Divergencies, your Maze Runnings, mm. The Host, uh, The Giver. Uh, good book, apparently not a good movie. Chaos, Chaos Walking. Chaos Walking. Mm. Is that based on a book? I Am Number Four, probably, mm. I don't know. Yeah, look, I think that that's just saturation of the market, right? That was like a three, like Twilight would be in there. It felt yeah. like That felt like a very brief window though, didn't it? I don't know, man. I think it was long. It feels like a, that felt like a decade to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. But that was just, sac- that was just, just saturation of just like, you think you're a normal, but I mean, that that became superheroes, right? They were yeah, sort of operating in parallel so. for about for a few years. For a there. second, but it was very much like absolutely saturated. Like you said, you're a normal kid, but actually you're the best kid, kind of thing. Didn't you know you're the best kid? You're the seeker. Didn't you know you're Aragon? Didn't you know you're the darkest minds? Didn't you know you're Ender's game? Mm. Didn't you know you're me, Earl, and the dying girl? Was that mm. one? Didn't you know <laughs> you are the sun is also a star? Didn't you know you're Artemis Fowl? <laughs> well, I did know that one because that's my actual name. Didn't you know you are Fallen? Didn't you know you are Percy Jackson, the lightning thief? Wow, there's some really interesting ones mm. here. Um, didn't you know you are the movie Juno? That one doesn't count, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you thought you were normal, but actually you're pregnant. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the absolute opposite of normal. It's <laughs> the weirdest thing you could do. But it was all the same, right? Every single one of those. It's yeah. Just, you thought you were normal, but then you were the Scorch Trials or whatever. <laughs> so... And and do you know that magic amulet your dad d- gave to you before he disappeared? And he or said never open it ever, and you were like, okay, I won't for, te- for fifteen years. I won't open it. Then you open it, and you were stuck in a time portal or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or and was... what he actually said was, please open this when I get stuck in a time. If you time portals, for God's sakes. <laughs> I think there are obviously good examples of this. Some of the young, some of the Hunger Games movies. I think. The first Maze Runner, which is the only Maze Runner I've seen, yes, pretty good. Okay, then. And I like Dylan O'Brien. He's fun mm. and I like him and he's showing up in more things, which is great. Would you rather Dylan O'Brien? Or Dylan Lewis? No, I was going to say Dylan O'Brien or Conan O'Brien, but now I'm going to change it. Would you rather Dylan O'Brien or Windscreens O'Brien? <laughs> <laughs> is that still a thing? Yes, of course. Windscreens O'Brien is still a thing. Let me check. God. That's a, an Australian company. It's Ian O'Brien. Wow. Yeah, now nah, they're all closed at the moment at time of recording. Wow. Not, not some great Google reviews here. Sounds like a perfect time for me to go down the street and smash some windscreens. The one in Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, is there a Brooklyn in Australia? I don't know. Yeah, well, it's an Australian number. It's got 3.8. Okay. Because got... in America it would be called Windshields, O'Brien. It would be called Windshields American America. Pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to help pander to our American listeners. Yeah, that's right. Uh, O'Brien uh, in Tullamarine, 4.1, a little bit higher. Oh, you think they do plane wheels? They might. Or windscreens or whatever thing. <laughs> yeah. I stopped paying attention. I think they put the plane wheels across the windscreen. 
and they use the glass for, for wheels. I don't mm. know. And then an Epping one, again, it's a 3.9. But this is what wow. you get with a franchise. You get a variety of different mm. additives. It depends who you get on the day, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. Very much like a Maze Runner. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the Scorch Trials? No. Didn't you know your dad was the winner of the Scorch Trials? And you've des- you're have you destined to be in the Scorch Trials. Wow. <laughs> That's it? I just, just, I just prefer, like, I'm more a winter, really. I don't want to do this. Yeah, I don't want to. It it's your destiny, bad. actually. I don't want to. Get an amulet. It's buried in your head. It's going to make you do the Scorch Trials. Was Maze, Maze Runner wasn't magic, though, right? <laughs> No, the world had ended and it was maybe zombies or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that's good. Mm. And they were testing teens to, I don't know. Yep. You thought you'd run a teens tester. You thought you'd get out of the Scorch Trials, but didn't you know this has all been one bigger Scorch Trial? The last one says space operas. Yeah. I just think this is a testy teens. (laughs) Because of how testy they are, because they've been tested so many times. That's right. We're we're real testy. We don't like this. Mm. Um, it says arguably a notable example, like even Star Wars has suffered a serious blow, which I don't, I mean, it has, we've talked about it, but yeah. it's still big and it's on TV. Yeah. And then they're saying in the Star Trek movies, which is also true, but again, still surviving on TV. And then you've got like The Expanse. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There but are also this article, this that, article is from two years ago. Yeah. Why don't you give me a recent article then, Mason? I didn't want to. Oh, you did actually offer to send me another one and I said <laughs> no. It's true. What's in your other article? Uh, I'll have a look. But... Um, what I was going to say is uh, Dune. Yeah, there I don't you know go. If, I don't know if it's revived the space opera genre. Yeah. I think it's revived, hey, we've still got some books that we own the, the rights, the cinematic rights to, so let's, Ooh, I love let's give those a crack. Um, I think I'll, they're doing a lot of good horror stuff at the moment, like Stephen King-esque mm, horror. Okay, how about this? It's good that we're not doing found footage anymore and they're making good horror. It's nice. Mm, it's nice it to get nice. good horror. Yeah. Uh, gangster films. I mean, we had The Irishman. Was The Irishman the last nail in the coffin? Yeah. We've seen some more stuff. Many Saints of Newark. I would also say, I still haven't seen that. Or are you talking old school, The Godfather stuff? Yeah. Gangster but I would stuff. say even if you looked at like gangster movies in general. Yes. Maybe they were making a fuck ton of them, but it seems like there's not that many. Mm. Or if there are, like, they're only, like, you'd do, like, Goodfellas, you'd do a couple of Godfathers, mm-hmm. you do Casino. Goodfathers. you do, like, The Irishman. Not Godfellas. The Irishman. What's the one? The uh, Gangs of New York. Mm. And, but then, like, Gangster Squad. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you remember the Hat Squad? Yeah, I do. Do you remember Public Enemies? Yes. Which was whatever. Mm. Yeah. Not really a thing anymore, is it? No. As much. Mm. It feels like we've seen it before as well. Yeah, that's true. And I think everybody really does. Fu- I mean, speaking of... Uh, Formulas and bloody bloody Martin Scorsese. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just like, just do whatever Martin Scorsese does. Yeah, but like, you're not going to make a better movie than Goodfellas no. in the style of Goodfellas. Mm, Why don't true. you make like a, a different thing? Perfect. Like, make a gangster movie, but it's the same with pirates. But like, ma- make it gangsters versus zombies. There's a dead <laughs> yeah. genre. It's yeah. just a thing versus another thing. Thing versus another. But thing. But I'm not talking like Batman versus Superman or Captain America fights all his mates. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like. Like a mashup of like snakes on a plane, buses versus wheelchairs. Buses versus snakes on a plane. <laughs> you know? Yep. Like Pride and Prejudice versus zombies. Yeah. It's like, nah, no thanks. Pride and Prejudice versus another Jane Austen thing. Yeah. They're in a fight. Mr. Darcy versus a different character from a different Jane Austen book. Mr. Arson? Jane Eyre. I don't yes. know. Is that yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we get we get two we get two groups of characters from Jane Austen novels, and then um, a, a gas is released, and they get really aggressive and yep. they want to fight each other. And they're in a scorch trial. They're in a scorch trial. Yeah, Mr. Darcy, Emma, the scorch trials. <laughs> okay, I think the we're importance done. of being earnest, the scorch trials. I think so. This is the end of whatever we're doing, isn't it? Yes, speaking it is. Of, oh, look, I got one more. Speaking of dead I got genres. one. I got one more. This podcast. Yeah. <laughs> murder mysteries, and I think there's two reasons why murder mysteries died, because we got Knives Out, which is very good. Yeah. Which is a, a murder mystery of a sort. Yeah. But I think two two reasons they've died is, one, Hollywood doesn't want to write movies that make sense. Yep. Because they don't have to. Yep. Because they can just do scenes of stuff exploding and people will watch it, and you don't have to... When you, when you translate the movie for foreign audiences, you don't really have to translate it that well. It's also no a hard cares. thing to nail, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. And also I think number two is uh, people like us is the reason they don't work because people will just nitpick a movie to death. Yes. Whereas like a Maltese Falcon or something like that, an old yeah. school uh, mystery, people would just go, I enjoyed that or I didn't enjoy that. Yeah. I thought it was exciting. I thought it was 
thrilling or what have you, but nowadays we'll be like, how could they have possibly the, the commute from the museum mm. to the the mansion is it's I've I've looked on Google Maps and it's twenty five minutes, but how could they get there in twenty two minutes in order to set up the whatever? And we we get mad at everything. Exactly. So, well, know. they did that Poirot movie recently. And oh, yeah, another there's one. another one on the way I, at some I, point. I just thought of another couple of reasons why that might might also be the case. One. There are constantly murder mystery shows running all the time. That's true, and there's real they life. never stop. Yeah. I mean, real life and also, like, fictional. It's like British crime dramas and whatever, right? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you've got your NCISs and all of those, mm. all that shit or whatever. But on top of that, if you have a movie where it's like, who's the killer or who did the murder? Yes. And then, it's, and then you find out, you don't see it. I mean, I don't. Oh, either. I see what I you're saying. Yeah, if yeah. it's like... I wouldn't rush out to see it yeah. if it's like, oh, it's this person. I wouldn't then And go, also a lot know. of people would probably just tweet the the, the answer. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. then it's like, well, and now I know, so I'm not going to say it. That's true. Where it's like you can't spoil an explosion, can you? It's true. Well, I don't know. Some people would beg to differ. Yeah? You said there was an explosion in this movie. Spoiler alert. How big was it? It was really big. Wow. Now, 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 now I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Anyway, should we move on? Let's move on. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the next segment of the show, and you're gonna like it. Okay, I will. I think I will actually. Yeah, you better. I'm gonna. Yeah, you better. This is, this is gonna be really good. I'm doing the thing. Westworld. Nice. Speaking of genres, go on. A dead Westworld, I guess. Oh yeah. Because you know, it's cowboys and also sci-fi. You're right. Yes. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't Westworld a lot of stuff. I'm still getting through that book, uh, all of the Marvels, which is good. It's good fun. You brought it around to my house to wave it in my face. No, I brought it to your house to wave it in front of Dave Warnicky's face because we, we recorded an episode cheat, of Book Cheat, which, which is, I don't yet. think is out yet. Yeah, uh, but that's that's very good. It's a good fun. It's kind of like um, as I previously mentioned, it's about a guy who read twenty seven thousand Marvel comics. Uh, and it's good, like it's a good. I think it'd be a good introduction if you didn't know anything much about Marvel. I don't know you, anything, or if you only watch the movies or something. I don't. Like I've that. never seen a movie. Uh, this might be but good it's for also me. like if you if you're a real comic nerd elitist and you like every once in a while you like oh you like oh he mentioned Strike Force Moraturi or whatever like that's a that's a that's a made deep up. cut. That's yeah, it's so. also made up. That being said, also uh, the YouTube channel Ahoy put out a new video. Oh, I love them. Uh, it's, what is it on? It's on uh, the, it's on sixteen bit sound and music. Have I been unsubscribed from these? You might guys. have been unsubscribed. Yeah. So Ahoy is a is a YouTube channel for people who don't know who covers. They release one video every fifteen years. <laughs> exactly. They cover various aspects of video games. It's often like the history of exploding barrels or yeah. like the history of. Um, the gun, a, a particular yeah, a, gun. like a Glock or an AK forty seven in uh, zombies. They did a. Uh, I still haven't watched there. I'll put it in my. To watch their Quake retrospective from like five years ago, yeah, right. And they did like a cool Wolfenstein one and Lemmings, yeah, yeah. and there's just really good. Yeah, just real, really real deep dives in the history of like you know why would uh, why do all barrels in in video games explode? Where did people get the idea of that? Like, what yeah. movies did it come from, etc. Anyway, this one is about. Uh, like music in video games and like the origin of like good music in video games, like where it came from. Like a lot of it came from like what what's called what are called crack screens. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like pirated video. Like a lot of pirated video games had like uh, uh like the the people who pirated them and and like made cracking software for them. Also made like little musical beds. Oh, okay. When you, when yeah. you started up, the, you know the, the the key gen that allowed you to unlock a video game that you downloaded that you did copied illegally from your friends or whatever and that and and all the ways that that turned into stuff and there's a su- surprising result at the end oh okay yeah i'm going to see it then yeah, i'll just like, add it to like my queue like what like what the, what these 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 guys making this pirated music and all these these guys who pirated software and, and made all this sort of music and stuff what did they get up to after that monkey Went to jail did they? No, no, I'm kidding. No, they didn't go to jail. Monkey Island Pirates. No, no, Don't they, tell me. No, it's a spoiler. They, they, didn't go to, they didn't make Monkey Island. Okay. But uh, people should check that out, I think. It's well, I good... actually listened. I saw um, uh, Chris Small, you might know. It was Chris Smalls. Do I know him personally? The, the Weekly Planet poster oh, guy. yes. Absolutely. Small or Smalls? I should know this. Small. It is small, isn't it? It's yes. One S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, he, uh, I saw he posted that he went on a podcast, uh, the Bob 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 podcast. Oh, yes. Bob 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 which is the first episode where he just went on and he talked about his oh, – for the people that don't know, whenever we say the name of a dumb movie and then you see a poster of it appear online. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Chris Small has done it. And he's basically just started this account just to like – this is like a fun side project. But he talks about basically his life and how he started with like graphic design and when he was a kid – and, like, he talked about how, like, he was cutting out bits of magazines and whatever, and then his dad bought him, like, a 
I can't remember what the program was, but like on a 286 or a 386. And he's like, Photoshop. It wasn't Photoshop. It was something <laughs> else. And then that's how he started kind of doing things. And then it's kind of a thing that he stuck with. And now he's, how he does these things. Yeah, right. Whatever, wow. and how if, uh, and it was really nice to hear like, also he said nice things about our show, how we're positive and whatever. And you know, what a turnaround. Which was nice. Though. Yeah. Like he's like, it'd be a fun, it's a fun exercise to make these posts. It's a real, chore, guys, though. It's a real yeah. drag. These guys suck. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I thought it was like, it's again, it's the first episode of this brand new podcast. And I just thought it was really interesting. Yeah. Great, yeah. Cool. And not just because some of it is a little bit about us, but I found it interesting <laughs> about his life and like just how he was doing this stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, anyway, it's great. It's cool. It's called Barb, 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 one word. B A R B. Okay. Right. Great. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, and she's a great interviewer as well. Terrific. Uh, what's next? Letters, I think. I think it's time for letters. Unless, have you, did you watch anything else, do anything else? I've, I've been watching Dexter, but I you might Dexter. talk about Dexter next week. What well, I forgot about. Are we going to have time? Because speaking of Paramount projects, oh, Snake we're going to talk about Snake Eyes next week. Snake yeah, I might have to push it back. But all I'll say is it's good to know that Dexter's still an idiot. <laughs> good, great. You know? Terrific stuff. Just an impulsive, absolute moron, dog shit brained idiot. <laughs> I mean, he's a serial killer, so like... Yeah, yeah, he's driven by certain impulses, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't mind it. Okay, great. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's Dexter. Okay. Ah, Dexter. How different does it feel that it's not in Miami anymore? So uh, like it's sun-drenched Miami. Yeah, I mean, it's it feels definitely feels different. And they kind of slowly work in old elements of the show like as well. Like Miami. Like Miami. He's like, oh, man, I've got to, in order to get this serial killer, he's fled to Miami. Yeah. Here I go. Here I go again. And there's steel drums. They go over the Miami sign. Also, I'm like, did people know he was a serial killer at the end? I don't remember. Or did he pin it on someone else? I got, mm, Can't remember. I know I he disappeared he... or faked his death or something. Uh, look, I was, I was not across it by the end, but I think... I think it all got pinned on somebody else. Yeah, that's cool. The you know mayor I, of Miami. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Oh, what's the next segment of the show? Letters. The classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. You know they're here right now. We're going to do letters. Now, James has taken off his wedding ring, and not for the normal reason he takes off his wedding ring, but to pretend <laughs> to it's... To go like, to a bar. Yes, but it's, instead to pretend it's a little monocle and look through it. And I go, could look at it. Look at my head. It looks like I'm still wearing a wedding ring when I take it off, though. It does. Yeah. Man, you losing some circulation in that finger. Nothing wrong with that, mate. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Actually, that's probably something yeah, wrong it with seems, that. Yeah, it seems bad, actually, yeah. Uh, anyways, if you do want to reach the show, you can simply... And by simply, simply, I mean uh, you need a twitter.com, mm. hashtag weekly planet pod on Twitter, or send a Gmail, exclusively a Gmail. That's right. Over to Nick Mason. If you're using anything other than yep. Gmail, get out of here. At weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. gmail.com. Uh, we might open it up to other emails in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah, but compatibility is going to be an issue, obviously. That's right. So we're going to have to maybe do some programming. Yeah, we're going to have to do some programming. Yeah. What have right. you got in terms of a letter this week? I've got a few letters. This is from Andrew. I know Andrew. He says, how do I read comics? Hello, how do you read comics? Like, how long does it take you? Do you just read the words? How much time do you spend looking at the drawings? <laughs> I want to read more comic books, but I never feel like I'm doing it right. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Andrew, sounds like a joke, but I think it's, it's no, a good, I it's think a good it's question. Because, like, I often find that I'm like, am I speeding through this? Right. Because there's a lot of effort in this. There, yeah, oftentimes, like, sometimes we'll, you know, we'll do, we'll, for our famous comic book club, yeah. I'm like, well, I should, I should, burn through this really quickly. So I'll just And you can. Through. Yeah. I'm like, I can just be like, I zip through the text and I got it all and I figured it out. But I'm like, oh, there was just like an epic four-page battle between yeah. two super-powered immortal entities or whatever. It took a hundred days to draw. And I and I just zipped through it in one minute. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, you defeated the guy. It's whatever. So take <laughs> yeah. your time. Yeah, take, I agree. Take, yeah. If, you can, if you can afford it, yeah. take your time. Because time is money. Time is precious. Yeah, and money. I think that is interesting, though. That's a that is a very interesting. I question. yeah. I often will find yeah that I. Just... I like the guided view because it yeah, especially right, if it's right. done well, then it takes you to exactly where you want to go mm. or you should where they want you to look. I prefer unguided view. Unguided, it's deliberately obtuse. Oh, <laughs> you click next and it just goes to a random page <laughs> in the book. And you're like, ah, why? <laughs> But well, also, there is nothing like a physical comic. I think right. I definitely slowed down on physical comics. Mm. I'm like, well, I paid for a physical thing. Yeah. And then it arrived in the mail. I mm. should take my time reading this. Because with electronic stuff, you can just, you can zip through it and there's always like another thing right in your hand. Like there'll be another yeah. issue of something or you can, you know. Ready to go. Exactly. You've basically got infinite comic books. But not infinite time. Time well, is precious so and money. Time is money, baby. Mm. 
Mm. I've got one here from... Uh, Take your time is what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, Mata Kwai. Oh, yes. Kui, who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, which is what you hashtag. Just when I think the stakes can't go any higher, they do. Arcane is probably the best video game adaptation I've ever seen and probably the best thing I've seen in a very long time. Right, Games and Netflix, thank you for bringing this to life. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, you need to review this. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about Arcane yeah. on Netflix. And what about you? Because apparently um, Cowboy Bebop came out this week and people do not like it. I've heard mixed things. Yeah. I've, well, see, that's the thing. Like, I've heard, you know, uh, I've heard stuff like, because I haven't got to it yet. I know it's out there. Um, I've heard things like, oh, they've, you know, it looks really dull compared to the, the anime. Sure. I've heard stuff like, oh, this, but on the other, and I, you know, I agree. Or like, uh, but then but then I've heard stuff like, this character's really annoying. And I'm like, that character's annoying in the original. Yeah, like, they're yeah, a little yeah. kid and they're annoying in the original and they're annoying in this. Like, yeah, okay. what, do you, what do you want? Yeah, right. But do you know anything about this Arcane League of Legends spinoff? That no, but I was hesitant. It looks really good. I've seen the does, trailers, yeah. uh, but I was I'm I was just hesitant to get in because it is based on a video game. So. Ah, based off a video game, as my dad used to say. What's this shit you're doing? What's oh, yeah. this shit? I'll hit you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, he wasn't like that. Wow. He he used to bring home a lot of video games. That's because he was playing video games with you. <laughs> yes, that's right. He was a Ryu. <laughs> In Street Fighter. And I was also Ryu. Whoa. He did not like that. Because you got the original I got the original. You got the yeah. white gear and he yeah. had to get grey gear or whatever. That's right. Do you have another letter? Yes. Why James. don't you tell us about it? Okay. This is from Dylan. Hello, Dylan. Wait, Dylan Lewis? Dylan this is Dylan Francis, but I think it's not the Dylan Francis you're thinking of. I don't, not think, I don't know anyone called Dylan Francis. Okay, then. Great. Do I? Let me Google Dylan Francis. No, you're thinking of the DJ Dylan Francis. But that's not even how he spells his name, this guy. Um, don't worry about it. I wasn't. Okay, great. There's also Dylan Francis Real Estate. I don't think he's Dylan Francis Real Estate. He's got houses up for sale in Brunswick, if you're interested. I think this guy's from America. Okay. Anyway, hi, James and Meso. Hello. Long time, first time. I actually found the pot after the Winter Soldier Easter egg video. Oh, yeah. I just want to say thank you. I was laid off during COVID and I've been struggling to find work in my field. Your podcast and YouTube channel have kept my spirits up through the whole thing. It's embarrassing how much I look forward to it, so I just want to say thank you and let you know how much what you guys do means to other people. Can I be the official alcoholic writer of the podcast? Now, Absolutely. Dylan, <laughs> I, I'm, maybe I'm seeing the problem here. Oh, I sound like he lives in a field, though. Also, you said he's in the field. Oh, yeah, that's he's true. He's in a field. I mean, you do what you want in a field, I guess. Yeah. Just just go nuts. You could mow it. You could grow it. Don't don't drink and mow. No. No. I was going to say unless, but no. No, there's no. <laughs> Chop a toe off. There's no, yeah, there's no scenario where you should do that. Anyway, I hope you're doing okay. Yes. I'm I... sorry to hear that. That sucks mm. um, because uh, everything is terrible. Everything is terrible. And I'm happy to confirm it here for anybody who was on the fence about it. <laughs> okay. But it is. But that's okay. Yeah. And by that, I mean it's not. Oh, no. <laughs> because everything's terrible. Ah! Here's something for you, Mason. Go on. It's from Dr. Andre D. Real doctor? Don't know. I hope so. He looks like he could be a doctor. He's wearing glasses. Um, he says. Like like reading glasses or like sunglasses? Uh, no, reading glasses. Okay, but okay, reading glasses, but regular reading glasses or those glasses that have like, like the beer, like the like the glasses of beer or like the big steins of beer. Oh, the okay. No, he is wearing those. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, that's cool too though, I yeah. guess. Anyway, Dr. Andre D says, just saw the preview for the upcoming Multiverses game. Looks awesome. I'm not one for gaming anymore, but this is one I would watch videos of. So I this wonder is, what hashtag Weekly Planet Pod thinks. This is Super Smash Brothers, but it's it's Warner it's Brothers. Bugs Barney character. and Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, Steven Universe and Jake from Adventure from Time. From Adventure Time yeah. and Arya Stark. And they got all the voice actors for a bunch of them. I like, thought you were going to say Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. But she is in Grande something. Stark. She is, is in she? a video game, yeah. She's in Fortnite maybe? No, it's it's like de- it's a deeper cut than that. Deeper cut than that. Or it's game. Fortnite, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Is it a virtual concert in Fortnite? It's Virtua Fighter. Oh, She's wow. in the original Virtua Fighter. Which character is she? Um, King? Uh, the the leopard-headed. Yeah, from Tekken. I don't know I've asked this before. Is that a mask or is that his head? I think it's a mask. That sucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, there is. I, I, I saw the trailer and I'm like, interesting. It's also got cross play across multiple platforms, okay. which I think is also cool. And they're like, there's going to be no lag and whatever. And I'm like, all right, we'll see. But on top of that, one thing that I'm very hesitant about is that it is free to play. And that to oh, me. Yeah, right. But I also think the free to play model should be rolled out more if you've just choked your game 
in like stuff that you have to buy in addition. So, for example, that Avengers game that they released, yes. that should be a should free, be free to play game. Fortnite's free, right? Like the Fortnite's base model free, is free. Yeah. Right? Well, nothing's truly free, Mason, because they're harvesting your data, Mason. Mm. Um, so, but no, I, I saw it and I'm like, cool, looks good. And a few other people have tried this. Like there was a recently like a Nickelodeon one that was released. Did you see that? It's got like no. Ninja Turtles and SpongeBob or whatever. Does, Does it have... Um... Rand Snippy? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. No, um, that guy. Uh, Doug. Not Doug, no. Hey, Arnold. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but they're all, they're a team. Maybe. I don't know. What's that guy? Uh, Rocco's Modern Monsters. Life. Doesn't yeah, maybe. Rock- okay, great. The cow from Rocco's Modern Life. The cow from Rocco's Modern yes. Life. Yes. Didn't they bring Earthworm back Earthworm Jim? Is Earthworm Jim? No, he's in a different thing. That's correct. But they bring back he's an, an Earthworm Jim. They bring back an animated show for that. But also uh-huh. the guy who invented Earthworm Jim, who's not turns involved, out right? Is, yeah, he's a big Nazi and stuff. <laughs> but he's, he sold it, so okay. you, can, you can enjoy Earthworm Jim again. He's allegedly a big Nazi and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ariana Grande is in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Isn't that what I said? No. <laughs> No, you said Rocco's Modern Life. I did not. Her character's name is Dangerous Ariana. So okay. that's fun. That's good that they've stretched that there. I don't know anything about Ariana Grande. I'll tell you something about Ariana okay. Grande for free, mate. What's that? She's in Final Fantasy Ex- Exodus number 10, Dangerous Dan. <laughs> no, she's, is... in, she's in Rocco's Modern Life. Oh, yeah. The video. She rides in a battle yeah. on the back of Rocco's Modern Life. Oh, does she? Yeah. Who's she riding in the back of? The turtle? No, the Rocco. Rocco. The guy, whatever it Whatever he is. The one who's having the modern life. Yes. Okay, I liked that show. And they brought yeah. it back. What's more modern than Ariana Grande? Mm, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Probably a new baby Yeah, would be even more modern. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say a Starbucks Grande. <laughs> very modern. That is very modern. <laughs> What's happening? This is too long. This episode's too Disagree. long. Disagree. <laughs> it's the perfect length. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you for all my tweets. You got any more emails? I've got... I've got two more emails, Let's James. Do it. Let's You're going to like it. them. Okay. This is from Nicholas Hamilton oh. who says, I forced my D&D group to vote for you guys. Yes. Hi, mates. I'm the DM for my friend group, and like James, I enjoy doing things purely out of spite. So before our last game got started, I made all my players vote for Suggestible. Fuck Hope the yeah. five votes help and keep up the good they work. They will help. Can I be the official DM of the pod? Yes. 100%. Yes. Thank you so much. I forgot to mention up top, we want to win the Australian Podcasting Awards. Claire's like, can you stop saying we're skewering it and just say we're winning it, which I guess is technically what we're also doing. Mm. But I'd like to think that we're ruining it for other people. I mean, what's the difference between like, hey, guys, um, we think it's – there's this podcast awards, we think it would be really cool if everybody voted for it and we were the big winners. Lame. What's the difference between that and we want to win this and – because we hate it. Like what's? They, there's no. There, I bet there's nothing in the rules that says you can't win it, even if you hate it. Exactly. Yeah. It's called a hate win. Look yeah, it up. Yeah, hate win. Yeah. Uh, and final email. Uh, it's from Robert. Hello, Robert. Uh, dear Goatman and Watch Guy. I guess that's me. Yeah. The reason all movies are perfect is because no one is allowed to talk to me for two hour. Yeah. Rob from New Jersey. P.S. It's pork roll. I don't know what that means. I don't know what any of this email means. <laughs> I get, I yeah, that. I get the bit where about nobody doesn't have to talk to anybody. Yeah, that's good, I totally right? get that, man. I'm some with of you. the best, yes, please. Yeah, sometimes people do talk to you anyway, though. Mm. Every now and then you get someone who's like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, is that the show? That's the whole show, Thank folks. You. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing to the podcast on whatever platform you prefer. Thank you for telling your friends about it. Thank you for leaving a five-star review, James. Do you have one or two there? I've got two right here. Terrific. You can actually just do it in-app, which is bloody brilliant, let me just say. <laughs> Uh, Samson Damage says the best podcast. This is the best podcast in the world. It would be better if they did a complete backflip. No argument there. And this one's from Pig Rolling Down a Hill who says, Bad Mates, good podcast. I'm giving this podcast five stars for Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight Alone. Nice. That's true. Good reference. That was an absolute standout performance from Heath Ledger. I agree. And I, I can see why that performance in itself has... Like, through time, people have remembered it fondly. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Did he deserve the Oscar? No. <laughs> no, he did. I thought... The Titanic did. Yes. Mm. The Titanic deserved. Yes. To within the, the the Dark Knight came out. Yes. So 11 years after Correct, the Titanic yes. came out, it should yes. have won the Oscar again. Mm. Yeah. For best Titanic. Yeah. Or whatever happened. Yeah. Very good. All right, what's next? If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Just call us on that phone that we... Or Twitter or the threatening phone. Yeah. Or Bandcamp. Or Bandcamp. Or you can go to Planet Broad, the Planet Broad. There's not much on Bandcamp anymore. I've no, stopped uploading true, yeah. it there. I mean, it's, it's still there. I haven't taken it all down. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of a 
terrible platform. But at this point, it's wired into my brain, so I can't. Yeah, yeah, it'll take true, yeah. it'll take a few weeks. Well, I'm just going to cycle I'm gonna, out of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just hit you with this every week. Terrific. Just really ruin it's the like, flow of the finale. It's like I like spraying it. a dog with a maybe I'll get one of those spray bottles. Every time we say bad cap, I'll spray ah! you. I'll spray you in the nose with it. Well, wow. I'll never be able to watch another American Pie movie. Wow. Um <laughs> you can it's also a good go joke, to, Mason. Thank you. You can go to Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod subreddit. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod Discord yep. and have fun uh chats uh, about podcasting and pop culture and all kinds of stuff. It's great fun over there. Uh, you can follow Rob Collings, who edits this podcast, and a bunch of videos and so much more. Does so much for There's the podcast. So many things. Uh, you can follow him at Raw Collings on Twitter. You can follow him at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown. And on Instagram, you can follow me at Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U. James is Mr. Sunday Movies. Yep. Everywhere. I was on Mission Zach's Leguizama Rama this week. Yep. I got some uh, stuff coming up, which I'll be on. Nice. Me too. Can't talk about Oh, I can't talk about it, but there's no point. So I'll just wait until that happens. <laughs> pointless. Yeah, pointless. Uh, folks, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies and chuck in a buck or any amount you would not miss. Mm-hmm. Fell out of your pocket, you wouldn't notice it. Yeah, chuck it over here. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't worry about it. Or if you're a big bloody spend, big spender, you can go to bigsandwich.co, sign up for nine US dollar dues per month, and you get. Bonus podcasts and movie commentaries and all kinds of stuff. Yep. It's wild over there. It, it really is. Spider-Man, Homecoming, commentary this week. And all the other commentaries. And all the every other commentary. A billion other commentaries. Yep, I agree. Billion trillion. Yeah. Thank you to the Brute and the Bastard. It's going to rack and for all the music good themes. You can get T-shirts on tpublic.com. Just yep. search for the Weekly Planet. Yep. yep. Just get a, get a real one or a bootleg one. We don't mind. Yeah, whatever. We'd like to see them out there. It's we don't good. really get any money anyway, so whatever. <laughs> it's true. And that's what it's all about. Weekly Planet Posters also has their T-shirts, though. Oh, there. yeah, that's yeah, true. So. They're often very fun. That's right. And they look good. And they sometimes agree. they're copyright infringing, so you've got to get them. You've got to get them before they get taken down and you've got by to the get, man. Get them before they get you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you one arrives in your in your post box, yeah. you've got to get it and you've got to strangle it before yeah. it gets you because it'll oh. get you in, in the it'll night. It'll get you in the night, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of, yes. just quickly, oh, this Go is on. unrelated. You, you finished the thing, right? I think so. I think so, so yeah. It's hard to say a lot of the I was time. thinking about this week about that time that you mentioned how there was the Shrek musical and people who just use poor quotes because they can get on the side of a bus or whatever. Oh, yeah, Shrek. And you Shrek said, like, a good time. Shrek a good time. Yep. And I thought of one, like, why wouldn't you say Shrek-tacular? Like, that would, like, obviously you'd say Shrek-tacular as opposed to Shrekingly good time. I'd say um, spec Shrekula. spec Shrekula. spec Shrekula. Okay. Because that would make you think of Shrek yep. and the speculum. What about Shrek's extraordinary? That's pretty good. That's a that's a that's top Shrek tastic. That's top shelf. Fan, top drawer. Fan Shrek stick. Mm. That's not as good. That one. No. Yeah. Anyway, I could do it. Is what I'm saying. Oh, you think so? But you could only do it with Shrek based puns. Yeah. It's a shame that movie. It's a shame that uh, musical sucks. <laughs> and they, and it's not around anymore. I don't think so. Ah. Well, maybe it, maybe it, maybe it, maybe it, you just gave it a chance. Did you know Phil Collins is in Vice City stories? The game. The game, the PSP game. Well, he has acted, hasn't he? Playing himself. Yeah. Playing himself. He's playing himself. Have you heard about those games that they're not good? Like they remade them. Oh, the remasters, whatever, yeah, they, just, they look good, yeah. And they, they just, look bad, yeah. And they, just, and, and they play badly and they're just absolutely they're full of junk. They're full of bugs as well, yeah. Yeah, let me find out what films he's been in just quickly. Phil Collins. Yeah. Okay. I think he was in Miami Vice as well. He was. Like the TV he was series. Phil the Shill yeah. in 1985. And the last thing he did was Grand Theft Auto. Well, I said his stories as himself. Nice. Oh, so he has done some stuff. Yeah. That's good. And his daughter's Emily in Paris. Oh, Lily Collins, yeah. Yeah. Great. It's good to see you. And he's the gorilla in the Cambriad. No, Mason. No. Does Phil Collins actually – I'm going to go. Does Phil Collins really drum in that? I know I'm tired because I'm just like – In the ad? Yeah. No, it's just a guy. No, no, no. I mean in that actual song, is it Phil Collins doing the He's a drummer. Phil Collins is a drummer. He was the drummer in Genesis. Yeah, but did he do the drums in the song? Like Dave Grohl doesn't do the drums for all the Foo Fighters stuff. Oh, yes, he's he, a did drummer. Do, he did do the drums, yes. Okay, good to know. Okay. All right. But Dave Grohl's not the drummer in the Foo Fighters. No, I know that. Well, actually, on the first album, he did all the instruments. Ooh. But then, but he's not now. I'm saying Dave Grohl was a drummer. Yes, that's correct, yes. But then Phil Collins was a drummer and then, which also, to be fair, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I just know Genesis from... The some, Sega Genesis. Yes. Yeah. I, I meant the... Patrick Bateman movie. Anyway, let's go. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Grab that Jamie, guys. We'll see you next week. Next week, Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes. Oh, also, I'm not entirely sure he did the drums, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just taking a pun on it. Why wouldn't he? Yeah, why not? He loves the drums. Maybe he does. Still, he, when, they, when he does like a live tour, he plays the drums and he's got a mic. He's one of those rare Mike drummers that also sings. His name's Mike Drum. Is that his, his name's real name? His name's Mike Drummers, yes. Okay, good. Goodbye. Bye.
This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.